97.3 The Fan. I think I meant to say 97.3 The Fan. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Let's get to it. It's your new midday hang. Annie and Elston here with you on San Diego's number one sports station, host of the two and one San Diego Padres. We are 97.3 The Fan. This is Annie and Elston. Annie Halbrun's here. I'm Craig Elston here with her. Adam Klug is filling in for Braden today, who is off to Nashville. Didn't have a weekend out in Tennessee, so good luck to Braden, but... uh, What's going on, Annie? How you going? I'm doing great. How are you? How was your day yesterday? Oh, went to a baseball game. Mm-hmm. It was nice. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> Very nice. And that's the show. We'll talk to you at 2 o'clock. <laughs> um, no, awesome day. Are you kidding me? Started off, we got to be at Baja Rex for a couple of hours. Uh, so great to see a lot of the listeners of the show in person. People who uh, came by to offer their well wishes uh, to the show as well. Uh, thanks to Baja Ricks, great host, incredible location. Uh, you know, a little bit more difficult for them to to uh, get you the plant based foods because they sh- <laughs> schlepped us out a giant plate of carne asada nachos. They look great though, and everybody <laughs> seemed to be enjoying their food. Indeed, and uh, yeah, when I gave them to Chris, I, I think he enjoyed them very Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Uh, so that that was awesome. But uh, great time, first remote uh, broadcast for the show. So uh, good to get that uh, under our belt and get moving forward in, in that aspect as well. Uh, and then off to the game and of course, sell out crowd, incredible atmosphere, weather was right. Game was exciting. Uh, everything that you really want on an opening day to be sure. Yeah. Uh, the crowd was amazing. It was a beautiful day. Everything was so opening day ish. You know, you saw the bunting that obviously that the field looked so great. The groundskeepers did such an amazing job and the the heart with the PS inside of it was so beautiful and Sheil Seidler throwing out that first pitch and hugging Manny Machado after it was such a special moment. I thought that was really, really cool for the fans as well to kind of have that moment with her. Um, and then the fans were amazing. You know, they, they, they got those yellow towels. It was very reminiscent of that postseason run when they waved those yellow towels. So all around, just like a lot of uh, good adrenaline riding there. No question. And we've got plenty to talk about, about the game. Of course, uh, we're going to, we're going to talk about yesterday's game. We'll look to today's game. We're finally in it. We're finally in the rhythm now. Today, Tony Gwynn opening day. It's going to be another very special day at the ballpark. They're giving away a hat today, so they're going to have another sellout crowd uh, to be sure. But this is the day that I have always cared about the most in Major League Baseball. And it may sound weird to y'all out there in the audience because who cares, right? And it's not even game two. It's game four. This year, but it's a weird year. It doesn't matter. Nonetheless, if you don't know the story, the story goes like this. Tony Gwynn, our beloved Tony Gwynn, Mr. Padre, the man venerated in the Tony Gwynn Terrace in the new Gallagher Square. Uh, Tony wasn't the world's biggest fan of opening day Mm -hmm. because because of all the things that make it more than a game. Because of all the fuss, because of all the to do for the extra 75 journalists who find their way down to the ballpark that day and find their way into the clubhouse. And uh, there's just a lot, uh, um, to put it nicely, a lot of riffraff, you know, that's, that's kind of around. Everybody is out of the woodwork for a day and it's all, hey, how are you? Whoa, ooh, 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 right? You know I mean? And you know, that's fun, right? We all did that all day long yesterday. Hey, happy opening day. Oh, great to see you. You know, uh, all that energy. And then it's done. And a, for a lot of folks, that's that. Like, okay, I went to Padres opening day. Cool. Catch you next year. Mm-hmm. Peace out, Boy Scout. And the real ones are right back there the next day. The real ones are back there. Game two, game two, the baseball fans are at the ball yard. The baseball fans are out to go check out the team because it's not just an event. It's a ball game. It's just a ball game. It's it's game two. And that's why that's why you hear us describe second home game as Tony Gwynn opening day. And I've always wished that the pot, honestly, Annie, I've always wished that the Padres would embrace that because everyone says it. In San Diego, like you go around to Padres fans. Everyone knows today's Tony Gwynn opening day. People will be saying it to one another at the ballpark today. I would love for them to lean all the way into it and self-describe that game two is Tony Gwynn opening day. I I wonder if I'm not sure that I've never seen that from them. I I feel 
Hmm. That's a good question. I'm not sure that they maybe on their Twitter accounts or something like that have ever described it. I, I feel like I maybe I've seen that in the past, but I'll have to go back and look. But yeah, it's it's a fun day. Um, it's a day when the like you said, the crowds get kind of thinned out, although it's a Friday game. Um, but in terms of like media and players feeling like they have to do all the song and dance for everybody, uh it it just all those opening day questions go away too. Like, how does it feel opening day? You know, <laughs> those are the questions you have to ask. You have to you need those sound bites, but they go away, which is nice, you know, and now you kind of just get to sink into baseball. So as I think will kind of generally be the case, uh, you and I experienced the game uh, in, in different ways. You were in the press box for the whole game down in the clubhouse after no, the game? I ended up actually meeting up with some friends also in a suite oh, nice. and staying there. Yeah, because the press box on opening day also gets quite crowded. It's a mess. <laughs> it's a complete mess. I mean, you know, uh, bless them. Braden and Adam had my pass and were like, hey, do you need this? I'm like, no, dude, I don't need, I don't need this pass. Not today, especially walking in with my bucket hat and my Joe Musgrove jersey on. I just look like a, a complete tool. Uh, if, if I didn't No, I'm a member of the working press. Hello, I'm here to take your hot dogs. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so uh, awesome then. OK, sweet life. Yes. The same same for me yesterday. Not trying to be. uh you know, all high and mighty and fancy, but I've got a high and my, mighty fancy buddy who uh, he's not high and mighty and fancy. Not at all. He's very down to earth, but he happens to have, you know, work for a corporation that has a suite. So, boy, it's nice. It's always nice. Always nice to have the sweet life at uh, at Petco Park. Uh, absolutely beautiful day. And what an exciting game for the Padres. And, uh, you know, look, it's three games. So all the things we said last year when the team got off, to a decent start. Remember, people were saying this to me yesterday, like, oh, Padres were never over 500 last year to the last game. I'm like, that's not true. They, they, they were over 500 a little bit in April. And remember, in May, they beat the Dodgers and they were either tied or a game ahead of them mm -hmm. on crying Kershaw meme day. And that was kind of like the giant yeah, jinx. That's right. That from that point forward, the Dodgers beat us, uh, beat Hader on Sunday night when they had they were three outs from winning the series against L.A. on ESPN and then went on the road trip, lost, lost, lost. Bob Melvin called him out in Minnesota and it never clicked. Yeah. Um. So they did have moments at the beginning of last year where the team was over 500. These are things that we always forget because we do revisionist history, but it does feel after three games, like a team going in the right direction. Yeah. I mean, last year they had, they had a whole month and over a month when Xander Bogarts was getting on base every single game. I mean, there, yeah. there was a different start to last year too, where um, I don't think you felt, I think you felt positive. I don't know that you felt uber positive, but I, I, I didn't, I don't remember last year feeling like the sky was falling early in the season. Do you? No, no. Yeah. It, it really, there were the moments, right? There were games in that first month where the team didn't hit with runners in scoring position, where they came from a 12 run game to put up a zero or a one, all the things that would plague the, the club all year. There were those moments, but they, you know, I don't think anybody was worried a month into the last season. Right, right, exactly. And it's just, it reminds you too, if it's just such a long season, like you could change within a month you could change your entire traje trajectory of a season for better or for worse, right? But any, but yeah, to your point, Craig, I mean, look, you like what you saw these last few games, even the game that they lost in Korea. I, I still like what they uh, what I saw in that game, you know, in terms of trying to fight back and and it being an issue with the glove and um, they, they never let it get so far out of hand that they couldn't come back into the game, you know, and the, what we saw from them yesterday and the, and the game that they won in Korea is they are going to fight. They're not going to hang their shoulders. Now, again, this is, this is three games. Like, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of this is, can be hard to say, like what happens when they go through maybe like a five game losing streak. If that happens, let's hope it doesn't, but you know, you don't know. Right. But for what you've seen to this point, it looks positive. Uh, absolutely. So much to go through. Oh, here's an open-ended question for you, because mm -hmm. I, I think there's multiple answers. Uh, what's been the most pleasant surprise for you through three games? I think that. I think, the, like, the late-inning hits were yesterday. You know, it was to see those happen later in the game. I think um, being able to see them also just keep, continue to pile on in Korea. Like, for me, it's just been, okay, we're not 
you know, we're, we're, we're being more aggressive. Like, you know, we're, we're going to go out the gate and we're going to like have the, uh, even if they're just buying into this identity right now that they are this going to be this kind of team, like they're, that's okay with me. Like they're starting to, you know, if the more that they do that, I think the more they can build that, you know? And so to me, it's just kind of been seeing them have a little bit of that punch. Okay. I, I think I got actually, mul now as I'm thinking through it, I've got multiple answers for this, but I got to start here. Tyler, the creator. Who knew? Tyler Wade, no more. Tyler, the creator. This guy is getting things done. I was like, who's that? Yeah, well, he's a, well, he's a rapper. Uh, I believe he's out of Chicago. I thought maybe it was the pregame performance or something. Uh, no, I mean, okay. uh, yeah, I mean, you're a rap fan. I thought you'd, you know, Tyler, the creator. I thought that would be one of the rare references I made <laughs> that landed in the room. No, no, okay. Uh, no, but, you, but he's been good. He's, yeah. Every single game, he's done something positive offensively. Now, listen, it's three games. So, small sample size, but every game he's done something positive. He's created something. And yesterday he was the fulcrum of the comeback. Yes. Xander Bogarts got hit, right? Yes. An error brought in the tying run. However, and, and Cronenworth salted the game. What a, what a hit for Cronenworth. Yeah. And, and he's number two on my list of pleasant sure. surprises to be sure. But, with Campy on first base, Tyler Wade came up in a spot that made you wince. Tyler Wade came up in a spot when you went, oh, man, 2023 Padres style. This lead single immediately gets erased on a double play by the guy who is a triple-A hitter, you know, a career bench dude, Tyler Wade. You know, maximum he's gotten in the big leagues is like 150 at bat in a season this is going to be that spot where our lack of depth gets us and wade makes an out and merrill makes an out and the inning is over and we come on the radio and lament the bottom of the lineup and tyler wade got that bad boy out to right field he got the base hit that accelerated campy over to third gave you corners nobody out put you in a situation where in a three two game at that point the odds of tying the game you know rise up around 75 percent or so nobody out runner on third that you're going to get that run home and then with merrill at the plate wade takes off for second base induces the throw from bailey bailey puts it into center campy comes home all, he scampers to third. All of a sudden, we've got ourselves a 3-3 game. Tyler Wade had the RBI ground out to give the team a 2-1 lead. He's driving in runs. He's getting hits. He's getting things done. And trust me when I tell you, I don't uh, I, I don't think I was canning on any of this happening at all this year. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's been consistent for Tyler Wade. He has. He's been kind of a, a – you've seen him in every game. He's made his presence known in the fact that, like, he's a little bit of an edgy player. Like, he will try to not skirt the – I don't want to say, like, skirt the rules, but he's going to, like – he's going to go for it. Like, he's going to try to make you work to get him out, and he's going to be aggressive, and he's got that little chippy edge to him, too, of, like, go ahead and try. Go ahead and try, you know? And so I like that about him. He's trying to manufacture runs. He's trying to manufacture – things to happen. And he's not just being like, ah, well, let me just go back to the dugout and sit back, sit, sit back down on the bench. And so I, I really do like that about him, that he seems to push for things. Um, question for you, who drove in the first run at Petco Park this season? Oh my God. I don't know. In the exhibition game? No, or? no, 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 no. The first game that counted at Petco Park, that would be one well, Dirksen uh, Profar. Well, hey, for us. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah, for for the Padres. Yeah, yeah that yeah. would be Dirk. He JP. Also, also did his part yesterday. He did. And then they, they just pulled him. I know. I and they just pulled bummer. him. Like, hang on. he's Now he, now he's our superstar again. <laughs> Maybe it's the every other year thing. Remember when Hosmer came to town and we we're like, oh, look at his stats. Every other year, Hosmer's great. And then it didn't turn out that way here. The, the streak broke. It was a yeah. Kansas City streak. But maybe it's every other year. For J Pro, like maybe, maybe this is the the two and a half war year that that sneaks out of nowhere. What I know is that this club now has been tested in three different games. They they were tested in Korea in game one. They were playing a nervy game, a low scoring game, facing elite pitching, facing the best the Dodgers had. They held a two one lead into the eighth inning. Some stuff happened in that inning, and the biggest thing that happened is is Jake Cronenworth's glove exploded on a double play ground ball. Yeah, 
So that team in that game showed us a lot. That situationally, they did things right in that game. They got a little unlucky. They lost the game. Game two, you get a big lead, and here come the Dodgers like Godzilla rising out of the ocean, just runs, runs, runs. Arr. And this is the kind of game that we blew over and over again in not only last year, but year after year after year against L.A., and they added on, they piled on, they they nerved up in the late moments, and Manny gave them the, the, the distance they needed. And then yesterday, trailing early, trailing Logan Webb early. I mean, you could have lost that game one nothing. Logan Webb, so good. A lot of people picking him to win the Cy Young this year. Mm -hmm. And instead, they chipped away. They stayed within themselves. They manufactured two runs in that fifth inning or bottom of the fourth. And then when they fell behind again, right back on the wheel. And I like what Tyler Wade was asked, what, what he answered. He was asked about that, about Logan Webb, because you're right. That's a good pitcher. He really is, right? But first time through, didn't have a lot of success. Second time through, the at-bats got better. Third time through, they were able to make something happen. And so you like that too, that mentality of like, okay, we're just going to grind away here. And and they did. And the last part I'll say about that, because I just think it fits a piece uh, with the discussion. Jackson Merrill's at bat. Yeah. Was the walk. The walk. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, listen, I don't know if he's going to walk 25 times this year. I really don't. The kid has a very low walk rate in the minors. And it's clear just even early on watching him play that his number one skill works against him in that sense. He can get his bat to almost any ball in and around the zone. He feels he can catch up to balls. He can time breaking balls. And so as a result, every pitch looks pretty good to him. You know, yeah. every, every pitch looks tasty to Jackson Merrill. And it's led me to this concern that, okay, pitchers are going to figure this out and he's going to have a stretch of a month where he has a hard time reaching base and he never walks in that at bat. He fell behind in the count. He fouled off tough pitches. He hung with it. He took some close pitches. And the pitch he took for ball four, little inside off the plate, that's the kind, if you're froggy, that's the kind of pitch you might have gotten jammed on, sawed off, you know, over swinging, pop out to the first baseman. And Merrill kept the line moving. That was huge. Yeah, eight pitch walk there. He laid off some really tough pitches. He fouled off a few. And um, Xander Bogarts has been really giving in his praise for Jackson Merrill and more so, you know, cause a lot of times veterans will do that and it's, it's, they mean it, but like, you know, it's, you could tell with Xander, it's really genuine. You can tell that he feels like there is something with this kid. Let him be, let him work, let him do his thing. Let him get accustomed to the big leagues. He's going to be fine. And I think maybe that those are the types of things that the front office was seeing and that these other players were seeing in making the move for him to come up to the big leagues right now, but that, that walk and having that plate discipline and that helps at the bottom of the lineup, you're the number nine hitter and you're doing that for the guys ahead of you too, or the guy, I'm sorry, the guys behind you. Like that's, that's a big deal. Let's take our first time out. When we come back, we'll set up the show for today. Full four hour show. It's a Friday. We got all of our fun segments uh, lined up today. It just so happened as well that match game is falling on today so uh we've definitely got a very entertaining second half of the show for you where we start to loosen things up a little bit heading to the weekend media melanie will join us we'll do netflix and chill uh we've got a lot set up but when we come back i want to talk some more padres more opening day and uh maybe take a look at it from the perspective of the guy in the other dugout yesterday one robert melvin be interested to See how that game looked like from his perspective. We'll talk about it when we come back. Annie and Elston, we're underway. Your new midday hang here on The Fan.
1025 on the fan. Welcome back. Annie and Elston here with you until 2 o'clock, a multimedia operation. We are live on 97.3 The Fan. We are live on Terrestrial Radio. Shout out everyone in your cars. A special shout out to everyone listening to FM Radio, but not in your car. You're a very special subset, a thin sliver of the Venn diagram. We appreciate you. Uh, shout out to everybody watching or on YouTube. We are a four-hour TV show in addition, at least a streaming video show. Uh, we are on the 97.3 The Fan webpage on YouTube. So uh, go to YouTube. If you've never done it, search 97.3 The Fan. You'll find the page. Click subscribe, and then boom. Videos will start popping up uh, in your timeline all the time. And we are also streaming on the Odyssey app, A-U-D-A-C-Y. We are also voices from the past speaking to you in the future. Everyone who is listening as a podcast on all the favorite podcast platforms. We are everywhere. Thanks to Adam Klug for putting up the pods today because Braden's not here. So it's, it's your job, Adam. You're, just, you're so multi-versatile. I almost made you a match game question today. For, Ooh, that's a good tease for, like your, for your level of versatility like you know adam adam won't just program the station he'll also blank <laughs> unfortunately there's too many answers because you, you cut sound you yeah, set up remotes you can't do. You, you're yeah. running we're the board all, all a big today. team here big family yes and, and you're the you're the biggest <laughs> you're like one guy that's doing like six jobs i, I was at a, a previous uh workplace where i once described myself as the sixth man on a six-man team <laughs> so like you're always in the game yeah you know? totally. Like, you're, yeah. you're in the game all the time <laughs> adam is in the game all the time something occurred to me last night annie when i was thinking about the game and hashing it out and like kind of just like going back through and thinking about the rhythms of the game because i think for us on the padres side of the field metaphorically speaking it felt like a different type of game than we saw last year. A game where the team hung tough, fell behind, not just once, but twice, including in the seventh inning. Those were the kind of games Padres fall behind late, forget about it. Game's over, right? Uh, they hung in. They overcame a rough pitching performance in the bullpen from Johnny Brito, uh, and they pulled out a W. So from where Mike Schilt is standing, this is the new normal. Here in San Diego, a team that fights, that is situationally aware, that does not buckle down under pressure. And then I thought about, uh, you know, the suite I was in was overlooking third base side. That giant stuck out. And mm -hmm. I thought about, how did this game look from old Bob Melvin's perspective? A team that takes a lead and gives it up and then takes a lead again. And a starter that you ride, well, you know, maybe just a little too long. But you got away with it. You got out of the sixth inning without further trouble. But it didn't look that way. Uh, as as Toddy was on third base uh, with less than two outs. And then take a lead. Give it to that seventh inning relief. And see the seventh inning relief cave in. And see a lead turn into a deficit. And then you don't come back. And you drop it. And I'm like, Bob, this is the exact same game you managed and watched all last year. Game one with the Giants had to feel deja vu all over again uh, for Bob Melvin yesterday. It's hard to argue with the fact that that result looked very similar to what the Padres have gone through and what Bob Melvin has uh I guess, directed during his tenure in the last year anyways at Petco Park. But, you know, he also obviously the year before had enough wins to get them to the postseason and enough of a fight and a comeback. So um, I, I, <laughs> it, it's a long season. Uh, I'm not putting, you know, any stakes in the ground as it is right now. But I think what it, you can say is that Mike Schilt has instilled this into his team, that we are going to be this kind of team. And you only get to do that. I mean, like, that's all words unless you actually do it. So the more that the Padres do that sort of thing and they pay attention to the little details and they fight back and they they show that um, they're not just going to lie down and that they're going to pay attention to the, to the little things and do them right, the more you build that, the more you're like, oh, I'm becoming that. It's it's the same like how, you know, you hear the advice of if you want to go be a fitness person, you, know, you have to start acting like it. You have to start breathing it and looking like it and whatever, you know, like so for the Padres, that's kind of what they're at. The more they do it, the more they can sort of adopt that mentality and it becomes very real for them. And that started with Mike Schilt 
in spring training saying we are going to be this type of team? I, I'm I'm tilting toward fanboy territory when it comes to Schultz. So I'm going to try and rein myself in. But even him coming out to check on Toddy at third base when when Toddy's head ran into Matt Chapman's knee. Nice knee you got there. And they you know take a look and get everything settled. Trainer asks this, that, and the other. And then Schilt, quick little high five with Toddy before they went back. He's like, oh, phew, all right, we're good. Yeah. I just I'm like I love the energy. Yeah. Like I just love the energy. Every time I see this guy, I know where his heart's at. And it's where I know it's where every manager's heart should be all the time. But it's like this guy wants to win this game. This guy is locked in, plugged in to this group. It it has a different energy. Yeah. I <laughs> I'm such a I guess I look, I saw this happen with Tingler his first year. I saw this happen with Bob Melvin his first year. And now we're on Mike Schultz's first year. And I always go back to what a former player told me, which is the first year is usually the best year for a manager. Everybody is trying to show their best side. They are trying to, you know, put their best foot forward, show that they aren't the person that they were made out to be last year. Now, this is still what you want. I mean, who cares, right? Who cares if this is what happens year one, as long as they go out and they win and they give themselves a chance to get to the postseason? Who cares why, really? You know, but I... It feels that way right now. Yes, I guess cautiously, I will say, you know, let's hope that I think it will last all season. And then let's hope it goes into next season as well. Let's hope it just continues onward in Mike Schultz tenure. You know, I, I in no way believe that. Like, oh, well, Mike Schultz here. Therefore, we just win 92 games and we're set. Maybe we will win 92 games this year. I don't know. I do think that. There are. Certainly, times of struggle ahead for the 2024 Padres, just like for every team in Major League Baseball. Even the best team has times of struggle. And there's a lot of evenly matched teams in the senior circuit this year. So almost everybody that's not maybe L.A. or maybe Atlanta is going to go through periods of adversity. There's no question about it. I get your sentiment. I know where you're coming from, Annie, right? It's sunshine and roses. We're talking after three games. Normally, I would say don't think of anything after three games. Wait for 33 games, and then you have an idea. I, <clears throat> it just feels a little bit different Look, now. I'm you, ready to dive in with this guy. Yeah, no, I, I think you love what you're seeing, and if you're a player or you're Mike Schilt, you want to win this game. You want to win these games against the Giants. You want to win them all, but I do think that there's something to players wanting to show, no, 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 we are not a team that lies down. We are not this team that maybe we were pegged to be last year or that, you know, with Bob Melvin over there, like we're, we're, we're this team now we're this team under Mike Schilt. And I, I absolutely think that for whatever players say, Oh, it doesn't matter that Bob Melvin's over there in that dugout or whatever coaches say, Oh, it doesn't matter that Bob Melvin's over there in that dugout. I personally think that a majority of them have an extra motivation to win these games. And and they'll continue to want to win, obviously. But yes, you you it's just like a player. You you always want to win against the team that traded you or dropped you or said you were this or that. Like, of course. Exciting start. Padres win six four. Hey, we're right back at it today. It's Joe Musgrove. Uh, it's Kyle Harrison from the Giants. And uh, he's a very talented young left-hander. Uh, don't look at his stats from last year. Understand that he's somebody that's on the rise, uh, that the Giants believe in, that they think Snell is going to actually help develop, uh, at least maybe subliminally along the way. Uh, but appreciate uh, what we saw yesterday at Petco Park. There's still some work to do, and let's talk about that when we come back. There's, there's one thing that's really rearing its head right now it's it's happened all three games so definitely worth talking about we'll talk about it next right here annie and elston on the fan and by that i mean the relief
So he raises the hands, kicks the leg. Now he delivers, and that's popped up. Foul ground, third base, weighed over by the coach's box. Now onto the side warning track. He's got room, and he makes the catch to end the inning. Matsui, a 1-2-3, top of the eighth. There you hear the gorgeous tones of Jesse Agler. Oh, Jesse Agler, Tony Gwynn Jr. on the radio. It is baseball season. They will be right back tonight at 640 for the Padres and the Giants game. Two of the four games set from Petco Park. Uh, opening series hat night for the first 40,000 fans in attendance and the eco water socal pregame show will get you started with sam levitt uh at 5 40 today this hour of annie and elston brought to you by ashley furniture Let's see if i can get this one right this time on the first try here we go celebrate and save at ashley's anniversary sale with hot buys your choice of color starting at just 399 dollars Ashley Sleep Mattresses starting at $250, plus receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases only at Ashley. Oh, nailed it on a Friday. Oh, come on. I do have a paper. <laughs> a paper snap. If the Padres are going to win, you're going to win too. It's exactly right. It's exactly right. So we just heard that clip that Adam played, Annie, from Yuki Matsui. Three games, three appearances. And his first major league win yesterday for the Padres. And so um, I, I teased that there's an ongoing issue so far that's sprung through three games. I'd like to bring it to you like this. On the one hand and on the other hand. On the one hand, something that you and I talked about all the way back to uh, our famous Wandy Peralta show mm -hmm. <laughs> has come to fruition early in this season. What a benefit it is to have three quality left-handed relievers in your bullpen, Annie. Tom Cosgrove, three times in a row, has been the fireman. He, he did a great job. Incredible, right? Yeah. And he's getting out right-handed batters, too. He's getting the job done. Right. He, he's that first guy in. He's the fireman for San Diego. Yuki Matsui has been put into those late-slash-middle innings three games in a row, and he's had the ability. Yesterday, he did something we hadn't seen yet, Annie. He went up and down, right? Came in, got that last out. Team takes the lead, goes right back out there. Boop, boop, boop. One, two, three. Gets right through it. He was super efficient, and man, he, he threw well. I mean, that I thought that was a really good move by Bob Melvin. Uh, by, see, now I'm talking about Bob Melvin by Mike Schilt there. And the beauty of it is today, Wandy Peralta is fresh. He's rested, he wasn't used, and he could be the guy that has to go up and down today against uh, Bob Melvin's platoon-heavy team. Also, when you've got a guy that you know is going to run platoon, it's perfect to start with a righty and bring in a lefty because then he throws in all of his Wilmer Floreses right. of the world, and then you switch back to the righty, and you've got the advantage again uh, in the late innings. So loving, on the one hand, what's going on with the three lefty relievers in the bullpen and that Mike Schilt is aggressive with his moves. You, you wonder how will this work? Like you've got to see them go through a series because it's great one game, but then you, you got to look at the next game and the next game and the next game and how, how will they do and stuff, you know, and that's where you're going to also lean on your starters because this is the first homestand. Like you can't expect your starters to go as deep as they would in even a couple months, not to mention later on in the season. So I thought Mike Schilt was pulling the right strings there letting you Darvish go until, you know, that the, like beginning of that sixth inning and then saying, okay, let's, let's move to the bullpen. And then later on in the season, you can start using your, you know, hopefully your, your, your starters will go a little longer, but he's shown that he's going to be aggressive with his moves. He is. He's aggressive with his lineup decisions. He's aggressive with base running and he is aggressive in the right way. I just want to emphasize this. He is aggressive in the right way. The numbers back up that a little too early is better than a little too late. Mm -hmm. And sure, Jace Tingler overdid it over the course of that season. Also, his starters let him down over the course of the season. Uh, and injuries wore the team down to the point where it was like Ryan Weathers and Joe and nobody else. Uh, but that's all the way back three years ago. I'm not worried about that. I like the aggression from Mike Schilt. But you got to think about, too, though, you're managing for a series, right? So, like, depending on how these starters do, right, it will be, can you always go to a guy 
So if, are you going to need them tomorrow? Or are you going to need them the next day? You right. know, but right now, like you said, it's a luxury. They're able to use it. First couple of turns through the rotation, everyone's going to go 80, 85 pitches. For sure. They're not going to, you know, Logie Webb almost got to 100 pitches yesterday. I, I, thought, was, that, I thought that was wild. Yeah, I thought that was, I, I was surprised about that too. Yeah. I thought he was going to get pulled out earlier. Oh, well, that's Bob Melvin though. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't pull him out too early. Uh, so on the one hand, things going well. On the other hand, the right-handed relief situation for the Padres is unsettled. Mm -hmm. Robert Suarez is the closer. We know that. Bobby Bullets gave up a homer to Conforto yesterday. Him giving up homers to left-handed hitters is concerning, but it's one game. He was up three. He's piping in strikes, so you don't really worry about that. But who's that second guy? And so far, Mike Schilt is casting around, essentially. He's gone to Johnny Brito twice, and twice it hasn't worked out. Twice Johnny Brito has come in and given up multiple hits. Uh, really, the only out he got yesterday was given to him. It was a sacrifice uh, that, that the Giants called for. And then the other time uh, in the 15-11 game, it was the Rule 5 kid, Stephen Kolick, that came in in the eighth inning, and he wobbled and gave up a walk and a hit batsman, uh, and they had to bring in Suarez in the you know with two outs in the eighth inning. You look around right now, and it just doesn't seem like there's an answer yet to who is the second power righty in that bullpen. And maybe it's Johnny Brito, but right now he's over two. This is a very valid question. This is a question, like you just said, they don't have an answer to yet. And they're going to, I think, continue to try guys. And this is where you also have to ask yourself, how much leash do I give a guy? Because you want a guy to get comfortable. You want him to get settled. You want to show that you have confidence in him but then you don't know where that line is yet and they don't have enough experience with these pitchers yet necessarily to know, okay, now how, you know, do I need to pull him off the field? Is, is this too much for him? Is he just not going to be our guy? When they traded for Dylan Cease, the Padres gave up Stephen Wilson. Stephen Wilson was their righty. It was their, yeah. you know, they could go to him. They could trust him. Now, I'm sure a lot of everyone listening would say that's something you got to do when you get a Dylan Cease. That's and and that's true. Like you you still you want a Dylan Cease, probably most people listening and and the people in this room even, right? For sure. So you want a Dylan Cease. So so Stephen Wilson was you know what was uh, given away there to the White Sox, <laughs> and we miss him. And you know, good luck Stephen Wilson. But he was a dominant a righty for them in their bullpen. So now they're trying to fill that hole. I think they thought it was going to be go. It's not going to be go yet. So who's it going to be? Are they going to try De Los Santos next? Will they let him maybe have a round or two, see where he lands? Because some of this, I'm not sure. Is it just comfort? Do they need to, you know, Brito really worked as a starter. Does he right. need to just be a little bit more comfortable in these high leverage reliever innings? And the fact, you know, all every decision impacts another decision. The fact that you've chosen to keep Pedro Avila means you've assigned Avila the long relief, multiple inning role. But I kind of feel okay. like that could be Johnny Brito's role. And right now, Brito is being asked to play a different role, which is hard throwing impact, you know, a dominant right hander that's going to come in and, you know, strike out dudes and and just, you know, carve it up for one inning. And, uh, you know, his number one pitch is a sinker. And sinkers, sometimes sinker ballers have to live in, and die with bad luck. You know, he had two two strike sinkers that got wrapped up the middle yesterday for base hits. Those could have gone to the gloves of Kim or Bogarts in a different universe. Hard hit ground balls that are just well placed uh, are going to be part of your life if you're a sinker baller. But also, if you're giving up a lot of contact, are you a late inning reliever, right? You you need swing and miss in the late innings. So yeah. I, I just couldn't agree more. It's, it's not like you're doing it wrong, Mike. You're using X and you need to use Y. It's an open question right now. And I'm not sure who fills it. Absolutely. And they have to learn these guys too. They have to learn how are they going to be in certain situations? Like I said, how much leash do we give them? So this is a question that is unanswered. Hopefully they can get to a little bit more of a comfortable spot, but for some of them, I do think it's also we got to give them a chance to acclimate. We got to give them a chance to feel good out there. We've got to keep pumping their confidence that they're going to be able to do this. And so it becomes this little cat and mouse game of, you know, if you don't put him in there, you're not going to be able to let the guy absorb and 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 figure out his spot and his role. But if you do put him out there, you potentially lose in the game. <laughs> Right. At least now. You you hope the spring training would sort it, right? But <laughs> yeah. a lot of things get sorted in the big league season. And and just, I mean, the point you made is the most important point. Stephen Wilson's gone and he's just not been replaced. Yeah. It's, it's, it's that simple. 
he will be mm -hmm. eventually either someone will grow into the role or they'll get someone right. for the role but uh it just hasn't happened yet and so it's the uh, we'll call it a lingering concern for this something to department. watch <laughs> indeed uh the odyssey app lets you jump back to the moments you missed on 97.3 the fan while you're listening to the fan you can see what you missed and click to listen on demand if you missed a guest feature or some crazy thing that happened we've got you covered download the free odyssey app search 97.3 the fan tap earlier today to get started uh 11 a.m is where we do our padres deep dive we've got a lot of great sound yes uh that was picked up from opening day and we're going to bring a lot of that sound to you uh coming up at least through um, not all the way through the 11 a.m. hour, but through the good part of the first half of the 11 a.m. hour. So with about five minutes left in this segment, Annie, I think it's a perfect time to mention San Diego State. Uh, yes. we, 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 we can't <laughs> let the whole first hour go without you know mentioning the Aztecs, who were the co-lead story yesterday in San Diego sports, would have easily been number one story in San Diego sports if they had beaten. Totally. Yes, absolutely. They would have been. Yeah, 100 percent. They would have led Sports Center. Right. They, they would have led everything if they had beaten UConn. They they did not. They did not beat UConn. So it looked OK to start the game. I thought, all right, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. And then it just kept getting out of hand. And then I think the Aztecs in the second half to make up that deficit were trying really hard for threes. It wasn't happening. Got a little ugly, but how else do you make up that deficit? Right. right. You've got it. So it just look, UConn's a good team. I don't think this was a failure on the Aztecs' part by any means. Um, they just that it was it was a tough team to beat. They weren't going to beat UConn, yeah. like you know, and that's in no way a knock on any of the kids in the program. No, no, they did a good job. Like, and and then they weren't getting some of their shots early, like that that I felt like it, it, normally they would make. And I don't know. Yeah, I, listen, the the best thing you can do at a level like this really at any level is go as far as you can go right D take the most out of your team go as far as you can go and if the aztecs regret not winning the mountain west regular season title so be it but this team made the sweet 16 they went as far as they could go in a different universe maybe they get a slightly better matchup against a different number one seed but frankly when you got to a team that had enough skilled bigs combined with a couple of good guards right. this team was going to be in trouble and you saw it at the end of the first half when i believe it was like four consecutive offensive rebounds for uconn and they had their big seven two guy and he was just oh boop up got it mm. toss it back out boop 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 long rebound comes to the guard boop, boop, another one and like you can't defend five straight no. possessions against future NBA kids that that happened over and over. And until the very end of the game, rebounds were 50, 25 for UConn. There were like 20 offensive rebounds. So that's that. That's that. You ran into a buzzsaw. Absolutely. And it just you could see it. I mean, it just became a little too easy there for UConn. And it was just the matchup. I think it was just in, in terms of um, not a fight, not a desire to win, not, a, you know, trying their hardest to win. It just became a, a little bit of a, of a running into kind of a wall in there in UConn. But a great look, good season for for the Aztecs. Great season, I would say, even. Um, I know that there are probably people out there that are like, no, they went to the championship last year. How can you say that? But no, that's not true. Like, this is college sports. Like, these guys are um, grinding out there. They're doing their best to win every time they're out there. And they learned a lot from this program. And they've continued the identity that they've built up there in Brian Dutcher's and Stephen Fisher's program. They've continued this role of winning they have. And, uh, you know, Coach Dutch had some great things uh, afterwards. Let's see. We got two minutes. You want to pop it? Yeah, let's hear what Coach Dutch had to say after the, after the game was over. First of all, congratulations to uh, UConn and Coach Hurley. Uh, we wish them the best of luck moving forward. Uh, they're an outstanding team and uh, will be very dangerous down the road. With that being said, I want to say it's not the ending we're going to remember. It's the journey because the journey's everything, and we've been on an incredible journey together. I take great joy here tonight uh, with these three guys sitting next to me. Uh, the fact that uh, they're 7-2 and two on college basketball's biggest stage over the last two years is something you take great pride in. And so uh, I said if losing a basketball game is the worst thing that's going to happen in your life, you're going to have a fantastic life. 
And so we're just enjoying each other's company, the brotherhood that they're always going to be a part of, uh, the family that Aztec basketball is. And we rejoice in that, even though uh, we're disappointed in the outcome of the game, the game is not the journey. And we embrace and love the journey we were on together. Great stuff, Coach Dunch. Of course, yeah. he had his seniors at the podium with him. Sad. It really is. It's like I was looking, you know, at that and just like kind of, man, you know, what a feeling for these seniors and for Dutch, too. They had a run through three weekends last year. Mm -hmm. Almost nobody in their college career gets to play three weekends in the tournament. Very special. And so, they got to share that. And right? then they got to play two weekends this year yeah. in the tournament. Yeah, so they leave with a lot of great memories. They, they really do. Seven wins in two years in the tournament. That's incredible. Uh, it'll be one of the greatest two years runs in Aztecs history. And they gave so much to the fans and the community during that time. Like, shout out to all of them for just being great community partners. Next chapter time for Coach Dutch and everybody. Is he going to lose some of his assistants? <sighs> Has to rebuild the roster. They're going to do it because the Aztecs aren't a team. They're a program. All right. When we come back, hour number two, Padres deep dive a lot of the sound from opening day next on The Fan. I don't like to jump in much, but I was like about to jump in with Stephen Wilson. I was yeah. wondering why he came. Like, he was, I was, was like, like, what yeah, is I going know, on, Adam? Like, you know? I was like, <laughs> like, I'm not saying I would have yeah. not done the trade. Like, you do the trade, but yeah. like, that was an underrated part of the trade, was <sighs> losing him and not replacing no. him. Like, I think it was like an afterthought because everyone was so excited for Jill Cease, right. but like, which understandable, but like, like I said, not was, second guessing it, you right. do it. But, but like that was not, not, an not an unimportant, not an unimportant piece that was kind of. They ended like up losing throwing. a lot of games in the, in, in the late innings year. because of right-handed relievers. It's really going to fuck them. It doesn't matter how.
Bury the fan. Back with you for hour number two. Let's talk some Padres baseball, everybody. The two and one Padres. A victory Friday on Annie and Elston. The regular season is underway, and we are here with you to talk about it all. Annie Halbrun's here. I'm Craig Elston. I'm here. Braden Soprenit, not here. Braden off. He's in Nashville enjoying whatever these kids do these days in Tennessee. Adam Klug's here. He's hanging out. He's producing the show today. He's got lots of sound bites. He's, he can't wait for 1245 to rejoin the match game panel. Mm. So uh, that's that's just a tease of what's to come. This has always been kind of our baseball deep dive hour. This is where we are going. And given that we had the joy of opening day, uh, let's dig into it, huh? Let's dig in, Craig. Like what's, a what's hot fudge Sunday. What's the matter? You all right? <laughs> no. Just fine. Just, you know, if we're going to have an unfiltered radio show, let me know. And I will, I will happily unfilter myself. I, okay. As far as the audience is concerned, nothing happened. Okay. So, okay. I, I don't know. I, I do not know of what you are speaking. I am, I am unaware. I'm happy to give a bonus content on the, on the stream every once in a while. Look, all I, all I have to say is I am so impressed with my co-host's proactivity because we had noted just very casually, uh, like station management side, that during commercial breaks on YouTube, our listenership would decrease. Mm, now you have a reason to stay tuned. But you just never know what you might hear <laughs> coming over YouTube uh, over the course of a break. So I suggest just stare at the graphic and see what happens. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> reset it's friday it's friday it's all, friday. It's all good you know it's good? all good yeah everything's like, good love 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 the interaction love everybody tuning in love the support it's good vibes are good yeah your uh your q rating went way up mm. in like five <laughs> minutes i guess that's all you need is <laughs> it really is. sometimes honestly. potentially drop a, a curse word as a female i don't know and... what you're talking about i never heard, i didn't hear anything i didn't hear anything um all right all righty then Here's Xander Bogarts, who is just like last year, but hopefully continuing for a while, off to a tremendous start, got the go-ahead hit yesterday, and had some really interesting things to say in this post-game conversation with our beloved Sam Levitt. Xander, you come up to bat, runner in scoring position, representing the go-ahead run. What was your approach in that at bat? To be honest, I was kind of taking on Brittle. You know what I mean? It's a young kid. Probably an unfamiliar role. You know, normally he's a starter. Yeah, he comes here. He has two games, pitching in some pretty important situations. Uh, didn't get the job done. I mean, I see him in the dugout every time. I mean, you can see it on his face, man. He's it's hurting the kid, you know. So just try to try to get the run in. I mean, give give him something to feel happy about. You know, I mean, he, as I said, his confidence probably a little shattered right there. But just taking on him, man. I mean, and Merrill put up a good at bat. Uh, I just felt like he ran the bases, put up good at bats, and, and it was a good team win. Xander, three games in, you're swinging the bat really well. What's worked so well so far? Uh, just continue to work, you know, and, 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 and just continue to work, man. I, I, I'm i obsessed with that. You know, I want to stay playing at a high level for a long time, and laziness is not in my, my DNA. So, I mean, just continue to work and find ways to get better, you know, listen to others, try to help others, you know. I mean, maybe the game rewards you for stuff like that. Opening day here at Petco Park, sold out crowd, another really nice win. What were your emotions on a day like this, start to finish? I mean, I ain't gonna lie, maybe, maybe a couple times I'm like, yeah, it's gonna happen again, like last year, you know, like we're winning and every kid, they come back and now we're like, oh, you know, but we bounce right back, man. That's just, I think that's a good sign that, that we know that this year is different, you know, right from the get go. We had those games in Korea and now coming here in the US at Petco doing that same thing, you know, because. I think at last last year at times you kind of like I wouldn't say full, but we get down and, and never really bounce back real quick. So uh, I feel like that's a good sign that you know that it's a new year. Xander, congratulations on another great day, another really nice win. Thanks so much. Thank you. You got it. You know what I never felt from last year's team that I just feel over and over from this year's team. I'm gonna, I'm going to praise Mike Schilt again through Xander Bogarts, uh, but this came from Xander right there. Empathy. There. Xander Bogart started with empathy. Uh, we see Johnny Brito in the dugout. Here's a young kid. He's not used to this type of bullpen situation. He's put in. He's failed. Now he's failed again. We see it on his face. He's so disappointed. We're so happy we could do that for him. 
empathy requires thinking of others and putting yourself in others' shoes, right? Inhabiting their mental space. It's not something that is selfish. It's not something that is self-centered. And I just feel like that has been an early theme of the 2024 Padres. And Xander's been right in the middle of it. Yeah, I love what I see from Xander Bogarts. He was like this last year. I think that it got a little bit overshadowed by the wrist injury and just a little bit about you know the, the season as a whole, just the fact that they were struggling and everything like that. But he is this guy. Like He is someone who goes and seeks out players, taps them on the shoulder, wants to hear about their lives, wants to help them with anything they need. And you hear it in these interviews where he will unprompted bring up another player either to praise them or to have their back or whatever. That is a type of leadership. Like we talk about leadership. There are all kinds of different types of leadership and there can be multiple leaders in a clubhouse, but that right there is a type of leadership. And I honestly, something that Mike Schultz does too. He really does. And it's something that kind of occurred to me last night thinking about that. And I, and I heard this interview as, as well um, on the 97, three socials, right? I clicked through it. I heard it and, it just kind of made me think this year's spring training began, literally began with an act of unselfishness. Xander Bogarts drove in the morning of the first day of full squad camp. He drove into the parking lot, a shortstop. He parked his car in the Peoria sports complex parking lot, a shortstop. He walked through the doors, a shortstop. Mike Shilton, AJ Preller waved him into his office. And 10 minutes later, he mm -hmm. was a second baseman. Mm -hmm. And it was literally that fast. It was like he walked in the room and he had his position taken from him. The one that he had bit played his yeah. almost entire major league career. And he walked out a couple of hours later and he said, I'm cool with this. Like, Sure, I might have liked a little bit more heads up, but this is going to be good for me. I yeah. didn't know when it was going to come, but it's coming, and I'm going to do it. And since then, there was never that story that you kind of feared three weeks later. Well, sources say Xander's not happy, mm -hmm. this or that. Questions are being asked behind the scenes. It never happened. He's just been working with Crony, working with Kim, working with Macias, working with everybody, trying to get down the, the rhythms of it. It was an act of unselfishness that began the genesis of the chemistry of this team. Absolutely. And you did wonder at the time that, like, will, you know, is he saying all the right things, but is this really going to be a little a little bit harder for him behind the scenes that he's letting on to or something that he doesn't want to do? And we're going to find out about this later. And no, that's not the case. And you could tell in Xander's interviews that he did he would genuinely work through it on the interview. Well, you know, I didn't really want to. I still think I have more time at shortstop, but you know, this is for the team. It's okay. I'll get over there. Like he was genuinely just working through it live like the rest of us, you know? And I thought that was pretty cool of him because he was honest. He was also kind of vulnerable in that moment. And it really is a, a good sign. You mentioned this yesterday when we were at Baja Ricks and we've talked about it throughout this, this season as well, that like the personal preferences the time of personal preference is waning. It's at least getting smaller where guys like to do this or like to do that. And they're always accommodated toward. And I'm not saying that there's not going to be any of that. There will be, but it seems like it's less than what we've seen in the past. And we saw that even with like jerks and profile yesterday. I'm sure he wanted to stay in that game. And of course he's, he's, you know, he's not a superstar player necessarily. I know Jerkson, I know you are. But, Only positivity. <laughs> but but not necessarily like in the context of Manny or whatever like that. And, you know, so, so there are going to be times that these guys are pulled into games or out of games or things that are moves are, that are made that they're not always going to love. But when you show something like that, like what Xander did and what these guys are doing for each other, you start to get more comfortable with these kinds of moves. Right. I mean, your leaders set the tone, right? And not to criticize the leaders of the team, which are some of the very same faces and names, of course, in 2023. But how did the 2023 spring training begin? It began with a demand for a contract extension. Mm -hmm. It began with not a threat, but kind of a promise. Like, if I don't get a deal, I'm opting out. Price of eggs have gone up. You know, uh, it began with another contract extension. People getting paid. You're getting paid. You're getting paid. Oh, uh, well, I don't want to hit second. I don't want to hit second. Who wants to hit second? You know, all of this stuff was coming and then everybody split to the four corners. Well, now we're going to go over being with the Dominican. We're going to be with Japan. We're going to be with Team USA. We're going to be here, there and everywhere. 
it was a completely different feeling, disjointed, and like you said, the time of personal preference. That's a great way to put it. And it 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 partly was because this they were all coming into the team new, a lot of them. Fernando was also coming back. They had come off of this big postseason run, and then now it's a little bit easier to say we don't need to do personal preference because of what the players have already said this offseason too, which is we were embarrassed. We didn't like how it went. So you put your tail between your legs a little bit. And that's why I avoid a little bit some of the head-to-head comparisons because it's a different time. I mean, they were embarrassed last year by their own volition, they're saying. Um, so it you kind of have to come back and say, all right, I'm open and doing something new. Let's continue with some post-game sound. Uh, Fernando Tantis Jr. in the clubhouse afterwards. Uh, we can now see if you're watching on the, again, just all the ancillary benefits of being on the YouTube as opposed to being on the radio. Uh, we are, I, I didn't see these. Did you see these, oh, uh, yeah. Annie? Oh, yeah. I saw these. So these are Fernando Tatis Jr.'s custom cleats. He started doing this last year. He takes usually Jordans, um, Jordan 11s, whatnot, and Jordan 1s. And they are done this year by the shoe surgeon who is known throughout all athletics, but also like in Hollywood for his ability to like custom wrap a shoe. And um, they're being designed by Fernando and his management company, Example. So this shoe has Peter Seidler all over it on the side. It's got Peter Seidler's face. It's got palm trees, Peter Seidler on the inside. And it's a tribute to Peter Seidler. It's a really nice touch. Yeah, the gorgeous uh, cleats. He talked about those as well as the opening day win after the match, after the game. Old for bumper. The shoes that you were wearing today, where did that idea come about, and how long does that whole process take to get something that cool? Uh, whole group behind it, a sample, um, coming up with a bunch of ideas, trying to do what's right, and uh, feel that it came out just perfect. Ob obviously, you were thinking of Peter and wearing those for a purpose. I mean, I think that's part of today's story, too. You, can, you guys played the way you've been talking about. Exactly. He's part of a story. He's part of my story. Uh, the guy was with me, holding my bag in my, in my darkest moment and, and cheering me the most when I was in the highest. So, you know, everything we're doing this season is for Peter and for the years to come, too. Imagine every opening, every opening day is special. What did this one mean to you just, just coming off the tackle season? Last year, last year, last year. We saw a lot of energy all the way around. And, uh, you know, I feel like everybody saw what, what kind of group we are, the kind of group that is coming off the gate. And uh, now it's, all, it's, it's, it's up to us if we can hold it for the rest of the year. Jackson said earlier today on the Jackson Hill pregame that he wants to bring young culture to this to this team. Are you are you seeing that from him? Of course, and I love it. You know, I, when the young guys, including myself, because I'm fucking young, uh, bring bring that bring the energy, the the game just flips the other way. By the way, just loved hearing the voice of Sean O'Neill in there. It's filling in for AJ Castle from MLB.com. Old friend so, alert. Yeah. How do you know Sean? North County Times. He was the beat reporter when I was there 20 years ago. Love it. Wonderful man to have around. Yeah. Also, AJ Casville is. But the, when when they swap, when he fills in for AJ Casville, we love having Sean around. Yeah. Yeah. He was uh, he was the norm, number one NC, back when the North County Times was a thing that existed. It's awesome. An actual newspaper. Newspapers used to exist. <laughs> um, yeah. So great. Just I was like, whoa, wait, hang on. I've heard that voice before. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little distracted. Um, I love what Fernanda said there, too, about Peter Seidler having his back through his darkest moments. It's just a little line there, but, you know, it reminded me of, like, yeah, that during that time when it was, like, should they, should the Padres try to get some money back from the contract or should there be a harsher punishment or things like that? Um, it was Peter that sat down with, uh, Peter and AJ probably that sat down with Fernando and and got a little bit of insights into everything that was going on with the suspension. So. Um, yeah, it was really nice to see that tribute and to see Fernando in his element uh, for anybody who was watching or not. I'm um, not watching. Describe him, Craig. Um, I, <laughs> why are you making <laughs> he, me describe him? He had his shirt off. <laughs> yes, he did. And, you know, He's Fernando. He's a very handsome young right, man. Right, right, right. And, uh, and <laughs> also for the YouTube stream. So you know. uh, Once again, we reinforce that watching on YouTube, greater than symbol, listening on radio. <laughs> Fernando's an entertainer. That first to third when Mike Schultz oh calls it a sexy play, yeah, that's it why. It is. You felt it coming, right? Yeah. Like, you, you felt that. I, as soon as I saw him drift over second, I was like, he's going. He's going. He's going. And then he went. 
Every situation, we talk about every bat's a situation. Every time you're on the bases, there's a situation and, you know, no particular order. I mean, Toddy's ball going first to third on the ball crony, top, you know, back to the first base side. That was, that was sexy. That was, that was, that was a fun baseball. I love that. I mean, anything Toddy does can be described as yeah. such. Mike Schultz seeing him run those bases, hair flying in the wind, yep. boom. I mean, how can you not? He, all of baseball loves this kind of thing. Even when he got conked in the noggin and then I he took that. off his helmet and he went whoosh oh, yeah. and just like whoosh, <laughs> all the dreads back. My favorite is when he slides, like he'll slide in a second and he'll obviously keep his hand, you know, on the base, but he'll, he'll lay back his arm outstretched, <laughs> you know, he'll just have himself a moment or two there, collect his thoughts, think about dinner later. It's great. One more soundbite in this segment on our Padres Deep Dive. Uh, by the way, the chat properly corrected me earlier, Annie. Tyler, the creator, not from Chicago. I got him mixed up with Chance the Rapper. Yeah, I didn't know who you're talking about. Is, is there a Tyler, the creator? Uh, Google him. Okay, let me see. Tyler, the creator, 33 years old, oh, out you, of Los Angeles. Is. Yes. Okay, all right. My bad. I didn't, I didn't know that. didn't make it up. Yeah, I thought you just gave him that name. No, I mean, it's a pretty cool nickname, though, I think. <laughs> uh, so here is Tyler, the creator, Tyler Wade, uh, on his postgame thoughts on this one. Taking that, taking second base, the ball gets away, manufacturing runs, and the four-run rally happens. Is that the, the little things, uh, the details, the situational hitting this down? Mike's been talking about all year. Yeah, um, so, I mean, Merrill put up a good at-bat there um, to put me in that position, and it can't be, obviously, as well. Um, but, yeah, man, I'm just trying to put pressure on the defense and create runs the best way I can um, and help this team win. When you start to feel it in, in you know, the bullpen, Webb was really good today. Yes, Get the was. bullpen out there, and then you start to maybe just start bleeding just a little bit. Can, can you feel something in the in the uh, dugout where it's like, okay, we're starting to feel the tide turn come our way? Yeah, he had really good stuff today. Um, I think first time through we were filling him out a little bit, and then um, second time through you can see the at-bats getting better and better taking better pitches, um, and that's just what we do. We grind out pitchers and then getting them out of there. And then uh, I forgot, I was at Luke. Um, he had good stuff today, but we we able to put good at-bats together and uh, just grind it out and come out with a win. Tyler, what was it like working behind you, um, Garbage today? He was working pretty quick. Love it. Just kind of talk about It was awesome. It yeah, you you look great. Um, everything was really working for him today, and he slumped the strike zone and working quick. So when that's happening, good things happen. Tyler Wade. Tyler Wade. Never had this on my bingo board for the year. Who knows how long it lasts, but let the, let the wave continue. Let this wave continue yeah. to roll for Tyler Wade. I like it, and I like that he's a, you know, he doesn't give up. He doesn't give up on the base pass. He doesn't give up in his at-bats. He's, I think, a little bit more also of, like, what this team kind of needs from those depth players, right? You need kind of grindy, gritty. He's played every position in the field. Put him wherever. He's going to give you a good game. Yeah. Or at least like, he's gonna dang, try. No, but light bulb, <laughs> light bulb, like that. It's true, and I, you know, listen. I want pro talent everywhere, right? Like over time, you want the best hitters, you want the best talent. Talent shines through. The big money players play the best over time over the small money players. It's it, it's true. But another thing that we kind of didn't have last year that I feel like we've got this year is a little bit more hunger. Like Tyler Wade is as hungry as anybody can be. Ding dong. Uh, Tyler Wade. Adam from the top rope. <laughs> yeah, the like, that was like a big bell, yeah. too. That was like one of those like yellow <laughs> bells, like big ones. Um, what happens when he doesn't like a thought? It's like, <laughs> like <laughs> Go the wrong direction, Craig. Turn it around. Match game is already yeah. happening right here. I'm, I'm matching with Adam on this, but like we just didn't have that hungry, scrappy type player that is grinding it because this is his life right now. We had a lot of guys on year one of multi year deals who are thinking about their next contract, and Tyler Wade can't think about that. He's got to try and keep himself in the big leagues. And that might be what AJ Prowler may be a little bit forced into this year, but it might end up turning out to be really good for him. Having a roster with a few of those guys and a few of these younger guys that provide this infusion of also trying to make it, trying to make a name for themselves, wanting to learn from the vets, and that kind of energizes the vets as well. Like, there could just be a nice mix here. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, but I think Mike Schilt did tell Ben and Woods that Eggie Rosario yeah, yeah. So starting I, today at third. Well, it makes mm -hmm. sense. You got a lefty. You got a – not just a lefty, okay? Right. You got a power left-hander on the mound in Harrison. You got a guy with a fastball. Mm -hmm. So – that that's quite understandable. And I see someone in the chat like, Hey, you should just, you should just start him again. Don't worry about lefty, righty, righty, lefty. Like that's Eggie's job on this team. 
Like that's literally his his gig on this team is to hit left-handed pitching. So uh, let the guy do his job is what I would say. And then if we need him in the middle innings, Tyler, the creator, just waiting to create some havoc. Yeah, bring him in off the bench, off the base paths, maybe lay down a bunt. I like it. Aggressive base running. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. Everything so far. Hey, we're three games in. Let's just bottle this and, and, Pour it out for six months. It's good. You know, it's it like like we talked about. It's good to start to form this identity. And maybe what, then when you do hit a rough patch, you're able to pull on this a little bit. All right. We've got more to get through from opening day when we come back here in our Padres deep dive 11 a.m. hour, uh, including some of what Mike Schilt had to say on Ben and Woods this morning and some of what A.J. Preller had to say prior to opening day. All of that continuing forward, 12 o'clock Sports Fix weekend preview edition at the top of the hour, right here on your new midday hang. It's Annie and Elston on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
This hour of Annie and Elston brought to you by Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Cash in on basketball's big moments with Prize Picks. Use code KWFN for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. I mean, it's easy if you get it right. It's definitely easy then. All right, Annie and Elston back with you. Adam Klug is uh, running the board for us today, firing the sound. We're continuing with our Padres deep dive here in the 11 a.m. hour. And uh, got a couple of different quotes here, Annie, on, on a topic that I'm definitely curious about. So uh, let's dig in. We're first going to hear from A.J. Preller before the game, uh, and then we're going to hear from Mike Schilt uh, earlier this morning on Ben and Woods on the manager's report, Perfect. which, if you've missed it, is every Friday at 9 a.m. on Ben and Woods, the manager's report. Also, Friar Friday today on uh, Gwen and Chris, 2.40 p.m., Dylan Cease interview today. Dylan Cease making his 97.3 The Fan debut uh, at 2.40 p.m. this afternoon. Mike Schilt earlier this morning. Uh, but first, let's go all the way back to before the game yesterday, A.J. Preller talking to the assembled media and here uh, still sporting that gorgeous mustache uh he discusses uh discusses what he likes about this year's roster yeah i mean i think again i think uh you know overall um you know you know from a got got really some some star power some guys that you know at the top of the roster should uh you know i think they're very motivated from you know going into the season from last year i think some really interesting younger players that have you know jackson maryland starting in center field come up through the system um, you know, some guys that honestly, like, you know, Tyler Wade and some guys that have, you know, from, a, you know, have kind of battled and, and gotten back to the big leagues and I think have something to prove. So I think, you know, mix and match, a lot of guys are very motivated, you know, coming from all different paths, but you know, I think that should make for an interesting team. There's usually some tough decisions making that final roster. Were there some tough ones for you this time? Yeah, no, I think uh, me and Mike, you know, Shelby talked about a lot of all spring training. You know, a lot of our conversations with players were, kind of like copycat conversations in terms of like guys that played well enough to be on the opening day roster and, and played well enough to be here at Petco. So, you know, they're, they're always fun when you're able to tell somebody they made the roster officially. And, you know, we had, you know, obviously a different process the last few weeks with traveling roster to Korea, opening day roster in Korea, and then some different faces, uh, you know, for today. So we had a chance to, you know, three different times kind of tell guys that they were, they were going to be with us and also made for some tough calls because some guys played really well in spring training, but I think that should serve us well throughout the year. Obviously, the focus is on how you guys are playing at the same time. The NL West is really looking to be a very tough division. How much are you looking forward to seeing that competition also? Yeah, no, I think uh, it feels like at any time players are available, they, they usually find their way into the NL West. Uh, at least the good ones do. So, uh, but it's it's really nothing new. I think it's something we've you know we've had for you know really over the course of the last five or six years. It's it's you know as good as any division in the game. You know, if you come out of it, you're battle tested. Obviously, you know us in the playoffs a couple of years ago, the Diamondbacks last year. You know, Dodgers, Giants, Rockies, it's just a really tough division. But I think it helps you from a competition standpoint for sure because, you know, make sure you're ready for the season. If you come out of it, you're, you definitely earn your stripes. AJ Preller discussing uh, his overall view of the roster. Any, any thoughts on that? No, I mean, I think I think he's right. The division has been trending this way, but it's gotten better, I think, with the Diamondbacks finally coming into the form that they've been hoping to be now for the last few years. Yeah, and adding Montgomery, adding Eduardo Rodriguez. Dang, that lineup looked deep yesterday. Of course, they were playing in the Rockies, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And but I do think he's right to Preller is that it brings out the best in guys, right? Like you got to be able to. You're going to have to beat the best in order to get to where you want to go, and yeah. that's going to kind of season everybody. Yeah, there's no time off uh, in the NL West. That's mm -hmm. for sure. And even when you play the Rockies, because if you don't beat the out of the Rockies. <laughs> You're in trouble. Yes, and Coors Field might beat you. Not not the Rockies, but Coors Field. So that's a hard one, too. <laughs> now, here's where we're going to get into something kind of interesting. Because both you and I, Annie, I think, as always, tell me if uh, if I'm wrong. I'm not, I don't want to put words in your mouth. But I think we both agreed that if Grand Pauly's not starting, we don't get, like, why is he here? Yeah. Why isn't he in the minor leagues playing every day, getting ready to become an everyday player in big league baseball? So we've got both A.J. Preller and Mike Schilt on this subject uh this is preller talking about different amounts of playing time for young guys like merrill and grand poly yeah, i think i think everybody's got a different you know different like you know path to the big leagues and then once you get to the big leagues i mean talking with shilty 
you know, we talked about putting Graham on the roster and it doesn't mean that you have to, I mean, I got a lot of guys have broken into the big leagues all different ways. So I think talking about it doesn't mean you have to play every single day, um, you know, to maximize your development. I think Graham will get, he'll get opportunity. Uh, we definitely see him as a guy who can come off the bench and play that way. And, you know, for Schulte, you know, letting him kind of put the pieces in the way he sees fit, um, you know, in terms of we got some some options from a defensive standpoint. We got options that do things, you know, from an offensive standpoint. Graham has some versatility. So I think he's going to get opportunity. I hope he makes the most of it. And, uh, you know, I think the more the more he plays well, he'll get more and more chances. So. Well, okay. Wait, what did he say? He basically said it's cool if Graham Pauly is coming off the bench because people develop in different ways. Hmm. Um, okay. Let's hear what Mike Schilt had to say, though. Uh, this was earlier this morning with Ben and Woods right here on 97.3 The Fan. I'm just curious because we know alignment is huge in the organization. What what did Mike Schilt have to say about Graham Pauly developing on the big league roster? Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, we you know we clearly want to take advantage of every opportunity. Tyler Wade's done a great job. Yeah, he's a fantastic job. He, he's um, you know, again, he's made baseball plays. Um, the, the, you know, our fan base, it's a, you know, very educated, passionate fan base is aware of it does, it does a lot of little things really well. He's played, you know, very good defense, um, on, on most every play. Um, he's had great at bats, you know, he's got a hit in every game, at least one, you know, he scored multiple runs, um, early in the season. He's run the bases really well. Um, got a big hit to right yesterday in that four run inning that, that got us going after Campy's base hit. Um, he just played really, really well. You know, Rosario's played really well when he gets the opportunities against um, lefties, and he'll get a chance today against Harrison uh, to go in there. So we feel really good about that. They're holding down third. Um, while Manny's still working to get back as an everyday player on the uh, on the field. Um, you know, so Paulie, I mean, you know, look, he takes great at bats. He's clearly played third. Um, just doesn't have as much experience at that position you know at the higher levels um is still working with him works hard every day clearly a guy we like um so it's just a matter of you know what what the opportunities present themselves what did you hear i uh, not no yeah i heard i heard baby baby bop is kind of what i heard right there so i'm a little confused about it and i but again, I don't run a baseball team. I don't have decades of experience as AJ Preller and Mike Schultz certainly do in this position. Um, maybe, maybe Grand Pauly will be playing today. I mean, against the lefty, I would doubt it. Right. But, but maybe. I mean, I, what if he's not starting yeah. at some point this weekend? I'm really confused. Maybe they. Uh, maybe they maybe they've gotten more out of some of the guys that they like, like a Tyler Wade. And yeah. so then they've kind of pushed off grandpa. Maybe they thought they were going to have to use him a little earlier. Right. And Tyler Wade's doing all right. And whatever, you know what I mean? Maybe that makes actually, that makes a lot of sense. That's like, Oh, Wade. I mean, it's Tyler Wade. Don't worry about it. Right. And Paulie's going to take his job in a minute. And then Tyler Wade comes out and for three straight games, he's Tyler, the creator. And then you go, okay, well now we got to play Tyler Wade. So uh, I guess it's okay that you're cool chilling here on the bench. I'm just going to say it right now. I don't put much into either one of those comments. And I think that if he's not starting, he'll be departing, meaning going down to triple A or double A at some point soon. First of all, well, well, uh, well done on the, the rhyme there, but yeah, I, I, I think so too. And I think that was all, so I think this was always the plan for Grand Polly. He was going to get starts and play and then, when Manny Machado comes back, he's sent down to the minors and he still gets a really good, a nice, healthy amount of plate appearances in the minors to continue to grow and, and better himself as a player. But it might happen a little sooner, maybe now. Like you, you just don't want him sitting around. Like you don't want Grand Polly sitting around. Now, this is it's still early in the season. He can still go go down and get a lot of time in the minors um, if that is the case. So maybe they're going to keep him around a little bit longer just to see what happens with this roster and maybe how Manny's doing, how that elbow's doing. And, but it's a little, it's a little curious. Sure. It, yeah. The whole, he can develop just fine without playing. Nobody mm. believes that. 
Like, who believes that? Nobody believes that. What, is he, that... He's in the video game machine? He's, he's, he's in the simulator? Also, what? you just want him. I, I had the chance to meet him the other day. What a likable kid. I mean, he is, like, eager. He wants to contribute. He's already gotten a pair of gold shoes <laughs> that look like the snitch from Harry Potter from Manny Machado's amazing Jordan collection. I mean, this this guy's living the dream right now, but you you want him to play. You want him to get yeah. experience. Yeah, just get get rolling, get rolling. Hey, it's it's all good. I was just curious, and I think it's very interesting that the two of them just kind of hominid uh, mm. through. I that. I feel like their conversations off camera are much different. Yeah. than what they just told the media on that subject. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. All right, let's take one more break this hour. When we come back. Uh, you dropped an interesting uh, story in our rundown last night. Juan Soto speaking in New York. We still remember this kid. Uh, Juan Soto on his first, maybe last year with the New York Yankees. It's really, we're going to open up the old uh, drawer and the cabinet called somebody else's problem now. <laughs> Not our problem anymore. Yep. Somebody else's <laughs> problem. We're going to open that up. And we're going to check it out as we continue. It's Annie and Elston, 12 o'clock sports fix coming up as well at the top of the hour right here on 97.3 The Fan. Hey, Sam.
1144 on the fan. Welcome back. Annie and Elston here with you. Braden with Today Off. He is in Nashville with family and friends. Or one or the other. Might might be both. I'm not, He didn't tell me. He just said he's in Nashville. What do I know? Uh, so he'll be back. He'll be back next. He'll be back next week, Adam. Yeah. Yeah, he'll be back on Monday. Oh, okay. If I went to Nashville, I wouldn't be back on Monday, man. I'd... Nashville's a great place. I'd take like a couple, three days off, you know, <laughs> take, take more than a day. But uh, Braden's like that. Braden, Braden's like that. Quick trip. Quick trip. He'll, he'll be there and in and out. Kids like that. Kids these days, oh, yeah. you know, tension span. You get it all in in a 48 hour span and then you're on your way home. Yep. He probably has something to coach on Monday. He probably does. He's probably just going to sleep on the plane. You know, right. he'll be awake all the way in between. He'll sleep on the plane. Uh, quick baseball story here. Uh, you sent this to us uh, la- yesterday evening, Andy. I read through it. Alden Gonzalez, uh, you know, a longtime respected writer uh, working for ESPN. Uh, long story on Juan Soto. And the headline in typical fashion is extremely deceptive. It says, has Juan Soto finally found a home with New York Yankees? Well, I guess the answer, I mean, it's fine. The answer is no. Uh, he's hes still, he's very explicit about his next deal is going to be where he wants to stay forever, his new forever home. But that's not this deal. And that's not necessarily the Bronx. Yeah, I thought it was, it was interesting because it talked about how he, Okay, first of all, it talked about how when he was traded from the Nationals, he cried for a day, which we knew. We knew that he did not want to leave the Nationals, and he was very upset about it. And then all the noise kind of stopped when he got to San Diego, but then he saw Xander Bogarts, Manny Machado, get these contracts at the beginning of his second season with the Padres, and he thought, I want that. I want to be able to call a place my home. I want to be able to have this long contract because they get to just stay there now. They don't have to have the pain and the hurt of moving around, right? Um, And he he gave an interesting quote where he said, I love being in New York. I'm paraphrasing here. I'm happy. I'm excited to be there. And then he says, but the teams have shown me you cannot fall in love with a team like I did with the Nationals. And it kind of to me was like, oh, so, you know, he's getting a little hardened. He's almost getting a little hardened by these trades. Maybe he's just that, that type of person, obviously, but then it also got a little bit into the Padres and Scott Boris and it did whether he was, there was a plan for him to become a Padre, which to be honest, I don't know that that ever would have come to fruition, but it was a wish of Peter's. When the Bogarts deal happened and the Machado extension happened, I think we all went, well, how could we possibly possibly extend Juan Soto. Wouldn't we have had to have given Juan all the money Xander got plus another Xander's worth of money? Because Boris usually takes his clients to free agency. Right. Yeah. So when was an extension going to come? But uh, this was interesting in the middle of the piece, uh, you know, speaking of a little bit of reporting, uh, Soto, speaking of Juan, uh, of Peter Seidler, Juan Soto said, quote, he really wanted me to be part of the team. And then Scott Boris Said uh, in the story, it says Boris saved his last exchange with Seidler, a short text message from November 2nd. Very interesting because we mm-hmm. hadn't heard anything about Seidler saying anything to anybody. Yeah. Uh, and it says in it, Seidler, who late in the season had undergone a medical procedure, wrote that he was improving steadily and that though doctors had told him to stay off the phone, quote, I'm going to keep in touch with you anyway. And quote, 12 days later, Peter Seidler passed away. But that that does kind of just open that thought. Like, was Peter Seidler going to say, damn the torpedoes, we'll sign Juan Soto too? Right, and we'll, we'll never know. Peter Seidler obviously has tragically passed, and it's hard to go back and say these were his thoughts, this was his motivation, things like that. But I don't know that they would have ever been able to find that money. Peter and Scott Boris did have a working relationship, and I think that Scott Boris felt like he was going to get maybe the money that he wanted from Juan Soto's deal with the Padres and maybe not have to go to free agency, maybe be building that over the last you know, year of his contract with the Padres and, and before he was traded and get to that point where everyone was happy. But we'll just never know. You know, we'll never know if that really was something that was realistic for the Padres at the time. And of course, Peter was in a position, um, we don't know his what his thoughts were and, and what the realities were at that time. But like you said, just hadn't heard it. Yeah, hadn't heard that these kinds of things and kind of knew it, you know, because Peter did express the desire to keep players on board. 
And then also kind of gave us a glimpse, I think, into Juan Soto. We talked, we've heard a lot about maybe he wasn't the right clubhouse fit. And, you know, but look, he was their most productive player last year, or at least one of their most productive players. So you cannot knock him on that. No, you can't. Uh, and just the last piece of that, uh, one other quote from Boris, he said, quote, I only know everything that Peter said to me. Peter Seidler always said to me that Juan Soto will be on his team. He said it 50 times to me. Juan Soto will be on my team. Yeah. So like you said, it, it, you know, sliding doors. We'll never know who, who could ever know. Uh, and when it, when you speak about fit, like the, it's never wrong to have Juan Soto on your team. And right now, all the Yankee fans are going through the same kind of almost like Gaga stuff that we did before, right? Well, what's funny, this little line in this article was the Yankees seem a little curious that he's not more excited to be a Yankee. He's not more excited about this trade. And that's why he's like, mm -mm, not calling you my home yet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he, he got burned once. And, you know, just like when that first you know, girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you that you thought was your forever partner. Yeah. And you're like, well, now, now it turns out that love isn't forever and it's not always real. And I know you feel this way too, Craig, of what is going to happen? I mean, again, he has an amazing year this year. I think he goes out to free agency and he gets a big, huge commanding contract. But then again, I don't know, are, the, are those days done? Are there only so many teams now because of this whole TV debacle that can give away those kinds of contracts? And will it come back on him that he didn't take that one with the Nationals? Uh, for ten, you know, for ten years and whatever it was, close to five hundred million. Um, I still think that he's got a shot to to get a really huge deal. But what a year it's going to be for Juan Soto. And like you said, this is kind of someone else's deal now. Yeah, uh, Boris says he has had exactly fifty two meetings with Juan Soto. Quote: I keep track of them. End quote. To go over quote the economics of the game and his value in it. Also, Juan Soto is the first player in history to make three all-star teams and be traded twice before he was 26 years old. Wild. Right? World That's, Series winner, three all-star teams. Tw you usually hang on to those players. You, you but usually he's, he's do. a commodity. He is also a commodity. He is, and he has been utilized as such, mm -hmm. and two teams have been willing to move on from him, but probably because both teams felt they couldn't afford him. Right, right. And and, and dealing with Boris, you kind of know that. You know yeah. what you're getting into. And now you're into the Big Apple. And I feel like there's three mm -hmm. places that Juan Soto can possibly be next year, and it's New York, New York, L.A. That's I, what I, I feel, too. I, I feel I, it's got to go Dodgers or Yankees. Yeah, and, and or Mets. Or, or Mets, or Mets. Thank yeah. you, yes. No, I think it could be the Mets. I think it could absolutely be the Mets. Uh, and especially as they have shed contracts, and they've talked about 2025, 2026, mm -hmm. I could easily see them going, hey, biggest contract ever. Steve Cohen doesn't give a hoot. <laughs> and you know what? If Juan Soto has a great year, he's kind of playing this the right way. Like, okay, you want to sign me? You got to, you got to, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this huge contract, you know, that's going to keep me with the team. I don't want to, you know, move around anymore. And if he has a, a good year, maybe he starts that bidding war with the Mets and the Yankees. This is not a rip on Juan oh, Soto. Adam. Adam. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can I just throw out one other okay. potential contender for Soto? Yes, please. <laughs> Is there a chance that the Cubs get involved? It's a big market. They have money to Possibly, spend. And they have they spent on Dansby Swanson, like uh -huh. saying they're ready to win. They kind of held off on signing Cody Bellinger to a massive deal, but they gave right. Craig uh, Craig Council all that money, and then yeah. we're pretty quiet in the offseason. Like you spend all that money in a manager, you got to give them players. And they also have their, their, it's like they have this weird thing where they're sort of part of an RSN, but they also get their own money right. through the marquee, marquee network yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Maybe. Possibly. Last thing I was just going to say is, again, it's not in any way a rip on Juan Soto. Juan Soto is a specific type of ball player. Mm -hmm. And when he is at the plate, he is always, always, always looking for his home run pitch. Like that is how he operates. He's looking for that drive pitch. And if it is a three, one count with a runner on third base, runner on second base, a one run game, and the ball is maybe hittable, but it's dipping just a, just a skosh under the zone. He's going to take that pitch and he's going to walk. And that's great. Walks are great. Walks are the lifeblood of on base percentage and of offense. But the Padres had a lot of rallies that would involve him walking in the middle of an inning that nothing happened. And I, yeah. I, I'm not ripping it. I'd rather have Juan Soto on my team than on not. On base. On base all the time. I'd rather have that than not. There's no question about it. But like looking for that critical hit in a critical spot, situational hitting, 
which was huge yesterday. We heard Mike Schultz talk about it after the game too. Like sometimes you're going to need to slice and dice. Sometimes you're going to need that big home run bomb. But yeah, you were you were you knew most of the time you're going to get a walk. Yeah, going to get a walk. <laughs> maybe a fly out. Maybe a strikeout. You know, and and it's it's just it's a three true outcomes player. He's a walk, a homer, a K. Uh, that's what it usually is. Uh, real quick, let's go to Tim and Miramar who dialed us up at eight three three two at eight zero ninety seven three. Hey, what's on your mind, Tim? Hey, team. How you doing today? Doing great, mate. Yourself? Good, good. Hey, first, nice shout out to Tempe on the ain't the part in there, Craig. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Hey, I'm being extremely facetious here, and I don't know where the season's going, but may I say, please, that I'm just amazed that the Padres managed to win two games without Tommy Pham on the roster? <laughs> you thought it couldn't be done? I, not me. Apparently, a lot of other people thought it couldn't be done. I don't want this guy anywhere near this team. I'm sorry. Nothing personal, Tommy, but, you know, take your stuff elsewhere. These guys will be just fine without him. Let's root for these young kids, the guys that want jobs, instead of a mercenary. You with me now? Sounded kind of personal. I mean, Tim, I hear you, man. <laughs> I, I hear you. I get it. Uh, you know, the vibes weren't immaculate around Tommy Pham. So on a, on a vibe standpoint, for sure. I think that they're, I think it's great to see what they've done in these few games. I still think that another veteran hit, hitter will help this team. I do too. I do too. And I think with a lot of left-handers in the for a low price. division, right. <laughs> but he's not across the line yet. So, yeah. you know, I mean, honestly. You like what you've seen. You like what you've seen from these guys. They they got it done for sure. Yeah. I mean, mm, mm. I'd like to see another addition to this club, but if it's not Tommy, I'm not going to I'm not going to cry. That that's how I feel, Tim. I'm not against Tommy Fam. I I feel like Tim's against Tommy Fam being on the team, but I'm not crying for Tom. I, I do remember just yesterday going like, "Let's get it over the line. Let's sign Tommy Fam." So I'm not trying to contradict myself. I'd be happy if he was here. If he winds up going for more money to play in Japan, that tells me everything I need to know. He's there for the cash. He wants to get paid. He wants to make Every someone. player is there for the cash. Every player is there I, I know, for the cash. But he wants to, does he want to play in the big leagues or does he want to just oh, to make two million more dollars? He's done quite a bit in the big leagues. He's 36. He's probably looking at his future going, what do I do now? A lot closer to Vegas in San Diego than Han Shin. It's a long commute back. He can get his bag if that is something. Just the way the other players have all gotten theirs as well.
featuring Braden Zabrenant. The good times start now. Here are your hosts, Annie and Elston, on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. 12 o'clock on a Friday, and if you're still working, you're at least thinking very hard about the weekend that is to be. Let's get you rolling into that weekend. It's Annie and Elston here, your new midday hang on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan with Annie Halbrun. I'm Craig Elston. Adam Klug's filling in for Braden Soprenant today. Top of hour number three. If you've been listening to the show. You know what that means. A bumper. Oh, time for lunch, eh? Hey, Mom! The meatloaf! We want it now! So your mom cut the crusts off your bread? Ma, the meatloaf! Well, you probably missed a lot in the sports world. Don't worry, we've got you covered from high school to professional and everything in between on the 12 o'clock Sports Fix on Annie and Elston. Brought to you by Team Kia of El Cajon. You should be driving a Kia from Team Kia of El Cajon. Weekend preview edition. So much to get to. All the news that's fit to speak about the world of sports, local, regional, and national. And let's start things off with my co-host, Annie, and the baseball report. We are in the season. Let's go, baby. Oh, it's so beautiful to be in the season. All right. Well, the Padres beat the Giants in their home opener 6-4. to four. In front of 45,000 fans yesterday, they trailed in the seventh, came back to win, scoring four in that inning. Now, tonight, the Padres will play the Giants in game two of the four-game series. Joe Musgrove is on the mound for the Padres. Kyle Harrison for the Giants. You know much about Kyle Harrison? Yeah, number one prospect for them last year, power left-hander. They okay. really like him. Okay. The Diamondbacks beat the Rockies yesterday 16-1 to at Chase Field. They scored 14 runs in a single inning. 14 runs! I was watching it. Uh, the most scored by a team on opening day in the modern era, so since 1900. This is what you're talking about when we say you got to beat up on the Rockies. Yes. That'll I mean, not literally in one, one. game. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to score 17 runs. 14 runs. runs. <laughs> it does help. All right. In other division news, the Dodgers beat the Cardinals 7-1 seven, seven to one yesterday. And for the games in progress right now, the Brewers are on top of the Mets 2-1 to one in the fifth inning, and Atlanta and Philadelphia are just getting started now. There is no score in that first inning. A little A's news before I send it over to you, Craig. Thousands of athletics fans gathered in the Coliseum South parking lot before Thursday night's opening game against the Guardians to try out a new way of displaying their displeasure over the owner wanting to move the team. They showed up, but they stayed away. So they just went into the parking lot. They waved cell flags. They ate free tacos, listened to live music, but they didn't enter the stadium. They just put it on a blow-up screen in the parking lot, and they voiced their displeasure out there, and they watched the game. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, they got to hear Jenny Kavnar's first call. Absolutely. So Absolutely. That's, that part's cool. Let's put a pin in that. I'd love to get back okay. to that uh, at the end of the sports fix. But first, let me give you what's happening in stadium sports in San Diego, and that means soccer we are a soccer city, San Diego Wave FC, back in action tonight. They are on home grass this evening, playing Seattle Rain. Now, Annie, this is the team that has been our local 11's utter nemesis. This will be the 11th time in three years that the Wave and Rain have played. The Wave are 0 for 10 against Seattle Rain, formerly known as OL Rain. Uh, they've been sold. Olympic Lyonnais no longer in ownership for them. The Seattle Sounders are the part owners of Seattle Rain now. But not only are the Rain 10-0 against the Wave, but they eliminated them from the playoffs last year in the semifinals. Now, it's a different Rain side this year. Megan Rapino has retired. Rose Lavelle has moved on. Emily Sana is now elsewhere. Uh, uh, one of the key members of Rain is on San Diego now. Uh, so there's there's been a change but still, doesn't make it any less of a tough matchup. Now, the huge crowd expected in Mission Valley tonight. They will kick off at 7.05. Good news for MLS players, coaches, and fans. A month-long lockout of the MLS referees is over. The Professional Soccer Referees Association has agreed to ratify a new collective bargaining agreement. This ends a lockout that for the first four-plus weeks put replacement refs on the pitch. MLS fans and players and coaches have been going crazy. Now the real MLS officials will be back on the field starting tomorrow 
and they will immediately go back to being ripped and complained about by fans and coaches and officials, just like old times. Continuing in Stadia, San Diego Legion. They will not be at Snapdragon today. They are back on the road in Miami. They will take on Miami Sharks. That is on Sunday, a 3 p.m. kickoff in Florida. Legion not home again till April 14th. What's going on, Annie, with the Sweet 16? All right, Sweet 16. Today's games. There are four games today. NC State and Marquette at 4.09 p.m. Gonzaga and Purdue at 4.39 p.m. Duke and Houston at 639 and Creighton and Tennessee at 709. So you can check out any or all of those. Obviously, maybe going in between that and the, the Padres game. If you're, that's going to be on at 640. So, you know, have your multiple screens up. Yeah. That's what you do. OK, yeah. and then and then tomorrow you have Illinois and Yukon. So facing Yukon at 309 and Clemson and Alabama at 549. And I have to add the reason we heard Sean's voice in that scrum is AJ Casavell and his wife just brought into the world a new baby. Oh, I know. And so just had the baby, I think yesterday in opening and during opening day. I don't know. It's on Twitter. Huh. Come but, on, uh, how timely was that, right? to AJ Casavell, yeah. Baseball baby born on opening a new, day. A new baby, a new first time dad. That's awesome. That's absolutely incredible. Shout out Casavell. Yes. Bigger family. Congratulations. Love it. Okay, let's do NBA, NHL here. Then I've got your arena weekend preview as well. There were only two games in the NBA last night. Neither were of direct consequence to the playoffs. But tonight, 12 games with heavy, heavy impact on the playoffs. The Lakers, they're a season best nine games over 500 now at 41 and 32. They are in Indiana to take on the Pacers, who are 41 and 33 and are just one game out of the play in tournament. They're in sixth place in the East right now. Miami's just a game behind them. Meanwhile, for the Lakers, if nothing else, they're trying to climb up to eighth or seventh in the play. And that's where you only need to win one game to get into the playoffs. If you're ninth or tenth, you have to win a game to get to an elimination game. Much more difficult freight. Right now, the Lakers are. One and a half games behind Sacramento, but they also are without the tie break against the Kings. Uh, they, however, are two games behind Phoenix for seventh and two and a half games behind Dallas for sixth. So Lakers trying to make a rise. They are in Indiana tonight. The Clippers, who got a last second win last time out, they are in Orlando for a four o'clock tip off today. Golden State trying to cling to that number 10 spot. They will be in Charlotte today, while Houston, which saw their win streak snap last time out, they will be in Utah. So those are the critical games. Phoenix at Oklahoma City, another one. And Dallas and Sacramento, another huge one. That is a rematch. Dallas blew out Sacramento earlier this week. They play again tonight. A win for Sackdown would push them back into a tie with Dallas for that number six spot. So that is the NBA update for today. In the NHL, Rangers keep rolling shootout win last night over Colorado, three to two. They are up to 102 points on the season. Rangers just keep it rolling so far. Tonight in the NHL, there's only one game. It's New Jersey at Buffalo. And last night, Edmonton took down the LA Kings 4-1 Kraken over the Ducks, four to two, quack, quack, Ducks. There's something that rhymes with it that is how they've played this year. They've just not been very good. Uh, on to your arena preview. Our beloved San Diego Gulls are at Tucson. Games tonight and Saturday, both face off at 7 p.m. Seals have clinched a playoff spot in the National Lacrosse League. They are off this weekend, host Panther City next Friday at the arena. San Diego Soccers, tomorrow night, final regular season home match at Pachanga Arena San Diego, the grand old arena that they've called home uh, off and on since 1980. Team is moving to Front Wave Arena, which will open in September up in Oceanside for next season. So Saturday night, tomorrow night, final regular season home match. It's home appreciation, uh, fan appreciation night. Also home appreciation night, but it's, it's fan appreciation night, which means $3 Bud Lights, $10 margaritas, 25% off the entire merchandise stand, a deck of soccer's themed playing cards, with all the players' faces on the face cards uh, when you come in, uh, and post-match autographs down on the floor. So you can actually, after the match, 
go down, take your last pictures of being out on the field at Pachanga Arena and get autographs and pictures with all the players. That is at 7.05 Saturday night. Mojo are at the Atlanta Vibe tomorrow night. That's at 4 p.m. Mojo trying to make it two straight wins on the road. And we've got one last addition to the arena crew, Annie. San Diego Strike Force. Ooh. Indoor Football League. It's back. San Diego Strike Force hosts the San Antonio Gunslingers <laughs> Monday night at the Sports Arena. Strike Force are 1 0 after a road win at Duke City on Monday night. Last thing Texas Children's Houston Open PGA Tour second round action. Tony Finau is your leader with a second round 62 dynamite for Finau. He is at nine under par. He is three shots ahead of Scotty Scheffler and Taylor Moore. Scheffler yet to tee off uh today so or pardon me he's through four and one under par today so scheffler's still with time to catch up to tony finau but that is it time on the sports fix 12 11 all right yep 10 minute weekend preview we didn't have Braden's high school report Braden so. usually will give it another good two minutes yeah yeah give you the college baseball mm -hmm. the high school i should I'll, I'll try and track that down adam why didn't you have the college baseball and high school report <laughs> I'm not big on the high school scene. Don't have any kids there yet. Didn't go to high school here. Plus, we can just let Braden give us the recaps on Monday. That's true. That's true. I mean, Braden's got that cathedral. Yeah, he's, thing. he's in it. He's in. Yeah, he's in it. He's in it to win it. You're excused, Adam. It's completely fine. You didn't have to have. <laughs> yeah, Adam's only running a right? running a whole you know station along with Michael and you know <laughs> making sure that we all get our air things. But where's the high school report? It's cool. Back to the A's. This is the weirdest, so most awful slash kind of coolest year in Oakland. I mean, I think if anyone could sympathize, Annie, San Diego Chargers fans could sympathize, right? With a lame duck year, an owner you hate, yeah. a team that has promised to leave you, and yet here they are going like, here we are. You're an A's fan. We're the A's. Why don't you come give us your money and, and come watch your team play? We're going to take your money and we're going to put it into Las Vegas and we're going to be like, see ya. Uh, and these, the fans of, I just love what they've done. They, they staged their own fan fest. You remember right, that? That was awesome. Staged their own fan fest. And now they're doing it. They're doing it every game. They're staging their own fan fest, so to speak, every game. Come to the parking lot. Show that you love Oakland baseball but you hate the athletics. I, I like it because it is, it's like a fine line. Cause when a team threatens to move, you want to go support the team and show that you are not the fans that the ownership and the league say that you are, that you guys don't care or things like that. Or they say it in a, in a little, you know, in, in, in a different way, they don't say that outright, but they sort of allude to that. Right. And, um, and so they're, they're saying, no, we're going to do it our way. We're going to watch these A's. We're going to support these A's, but we're not going to give you our money. And I, I love, yeah, Chris, in the park, uh, this is the question I had. Did the, do the A's get the parking? Okay, maybe they had to give the their Coliseum. money for for parking, Chris. I don't know. <laughs> I, I wasn't here when it happened. They may have had to. How, how, what was the length of time in between when the Chargers announced they were leaving and continued playing here two in seasons. San Diego? Yeah, two So how two was that seasons. experience like for you guys? <sighs> It was all visiting fans the second year. Yeah, and and then what would happen is all those visuals would get put out on social media and you'd have all these people who had, for whatever reason, been influenced by Dean Spanos that the move was a good idea, putting out over social media, well, look, San Diego doesn't care about their fans. San Diego doesn't want to be there for their fans. They're not coming for, the for these games, which was absolutely not the truth. It was this narrative that was a very low-hanging fruit. And because San Diego didn't want to say no, like they didn't want to come to the games and give Dean Spanos any more of their money after he had literally held it over their head for two seasons and essentially said that the fans were going to be better in Los Angeles. He did. He straight up said it. He, he told us all where we could stick it, basically. Let us all know that we could go support the team up in L.A., if we were so inclined, but by the way, buy season tickets, by the way, single game tickets now available, by the way, pay and tailgate and support the, the chargers. And, and we'll use it against you. Right. If you don't, when the truth is all fans could have filled that stadium for every game, 
standing capacity only, and they still would have moved. 100%. 100%. You could have given them another $1,000 a fan on top of yep. it, and they would have said, that's so nice for the money. That's so nice. So, and, But it was very tense, Adam. Like, to answer your question, like, inside the stadium, it would be very... You know, you'd have the you'd have the signs, and then the, the TV cameras sometimes would show them, sometimes wouldn't. You'd have the booze. You'd have the players asked after every game what their thoughts are, what their thoughts are on the crowd. Like it took over, it permeated both of those seasons. And it, you know, uh, Flanders in the chat says that's not accurate, my friends. We had hope up until that last off season between San Diego and Carson Flanders. Flanders, oh, I hate to break it to you, My brother. man, I was talking to the league officials that whole time. Yeah. <laughs> there was <laughs> no hope. There was no hope. That hope you felt was a lie that was told on purpose by the organization to flim flam and gaslight you to keep you on board. You know, it was such a bummer about that, too. Um, being at those owners meetings and there was there was one official and I'm sorry, his name is also awesome honestly escaping me right now, but he was at the top of the NFL food chain in terms of trying to figure out this relocation thing. And he loves San Diego. And he was like, the fans here are great. They're going to make it work. I think that the chargers are going to be able to make this work. Like we don't want to leave. And, and as soon as they moved to LA, this guy went, they, the, the NFL put him off into, they put him off on an Island somewhere never to be found again. Cause that's how they do things. But, um, the league really wanted San Diego to work. The league likes San Diego. They like coming here for owners meetings. They liked having events here. I mean, who doesn't like coming to San Diego? You know, it right. was it was a, it was a nice spot for them. It was. Uh, I mean, I never forgot the last Super Bowl that was here and Tagliabue, uh, the commissioner at the time, Paul Tagliabue of the NFL, uh, saying in his Friday thing like, "Well, you know, you need a new stadium or else we're not coming back." Like, that's it. We love it here, but and and, and it really always. Honestly, it really felt that way. If you're if you're an old time Chargers fan, you know, sometimes we kind of memory hole the bad parts, but it was decades. It was decades of listen, if you don't buy us a new stadium, LA's right up there. Right. I remember doing a final game at Qualcomm covering one, and they thought they were gonna leave, and then they end up staying another season. But that whole game, it was like, are they gonna leave? Are they gonna leave? Is this gonna be the season? And then they ended up staying again. And um, it, it definitely was part of the fabric of of that team, and and they had to answer questions to it on pretty much every every week. Yeah, and it was always about, hey, buy us stuff, buy us a stadium, public yeah. money, give us a stadium, give us a billion dollars, build a thing for us, and if you do, maybe we'll stick around for you, and if you don't, we've got a great place to go where we can be renters. So, sure, they didn't announce it until january of 2017 mm -hmm. i knew in 2014 the charges were moving i knew in 2014 they, were, they had started the seeds uh, they had planted the seeds of relocation early on and and i say that not like oh i'm better than anyone else i i did it the best way i'm not saying that at all everyone fans their own way there are plenty plenty of chargers fans who are still chargers fans and who said i don't care where you play, I watch you on TV. It doesn't matter. I just root for the lightning bolt and I want the lightning bolt to succeed. Okay. But I knew going into 2015 that the team was gone. And so as a fan, as someone who grew up, who, when I was eight years, nine years old, I was rooting for the chargers more than any other team that I rooted for in any sport, in any league in the world. I started to just mentally divorce myself from the team in 2015 saying, screw you guys. You don't want to be here for us. You're leaving. I'm going to leave you. And divorces can be ugly. They can be messy and they take a long time to resolve. Mm -hmm. And and I really feel like there's a lot of people in 2017 who went through that and felt completely broken. And I just, I started the process two years before that. So that by the time they got to Carson, I was like, just go, just get out of my life. I then spent the next three, four years never watching the team. And now I can, you know, if the team's on red zone, I don't switch the channel or whatever, but it's 100% revisionist history to say anything other than the Chargers were going to go to LA and they were going to go to LA. Yeah, and unfortunately, the um, the rhetoric inside that office, like the the what was said inside the Chargers office when they did make their minds up to go to LA was very against the San Diego fans. It was very, you know, even if it was behind the scenes, it was very much like we deserve better than what we're getting here. And that's their right. That's their, they, that's their prerogative. That's how they felt. But 
I, I don't feel that way about San Diego fans. And I don't feel that way about how San Diego showed up for the chargers. No. And so or love yeah, the chargers. Yeah. And, and I, you don't have to find the comparisons apples to apples or, or directly even that's completely fine. Oh, but then after I, I see what they're asking. Well, once it was official, they stayed in San Diego and yeah. they worked out at Chargers Park and you'd have the L.A. media. I remember. Oh, my God. I remember one L.A. media guy. Um, <laughs> I remember the L.A. media descending upon Chargers Park. Philip Rivers would have to answer all these questions. And then one time a guy goes from the L.A. media. He goes he looks at me and he goes, hey, who, who's that guy? Who's that guy? Should we interview him? It was Antonio Gates. OK, this was what we were dealing with. At that time, they didn't know the Chargers. They came down to cover the Chargers. We all shared that same capacity at Chargers Park, but the Chargers had to start spinning. Like their players had to start spinning. We're okay with LA. We're, you know, uh, we're good with it. We're looking forward to it. Cause what else could they say? Right. Some of them didn't, but what else could the rest of them say? So they're kind of in that position now with the A's where they're like, sure, we're excited about Las Vegas. Sure. Yeah. Let's go. Right. Uh, and, uh, and just like you said earlier, too, that last season, you started to hear the players going like, well, God, we had to play 16 road games this year. Every time we were home, it, we played the Vikings and it was all Vikings fans. Oh, yeah, yeah. We played the Eagles and it was all Eagles fans. It wasn't just the Raiders in, invading their stadium like before. It was like literally every team. Yeah. And then, of course, they went to Carson. And it was the exact same thing right. for two more years where it was 98 percent the other team. So, Ace fans, listen, you've got some sympathy down here. In America's finest city. Totally. We feel you. We feel you big time. Uh, let's take a break. Plenty still to come on Annie and Elston. We'll talk some more Padres baseball. We got match game coming up at 1245. Just a segment away. Netflix and chill is coming up as well. So stay right here. It's your new midday hang. It's Annie and Elston on San Diego's number one sports station. 97.3 The Fan. Are you tired of yo-yo dieting? Are you thinking about trying the latest fad prescription drug with their list of possible side effects? Most people don't realize that while you may lose weight, it's just temporarily suppressing your hunger, so as soon as you get off the drug, your frustration and your weight could come back. At SDFatLoss.com, we know the secret to quick weight loss and most importantly, safe and lasting weight loss. Our program has helped over 40,000 patients across the country break the weight loss code. Gone are the starvation diet plans. Our program is healthy weight loss using real whole foods and proprietary strategies to help guide our patients through their successful weight loss with a roadmap to keep the weight off long term hey it's gravy and if you're done being exhausted with the same old stubborn weight problem and you want to look in the mirror and actually like what you see do what i did and find out the secret to losing up to a pound per day with 20 to 30 pounds gone in about a month or two call 858-665-3211 to schedule your free consultation in person or virtually or go to sdfatloss.com results may vary San Diego to Tijuana, bus leaving in three minutes. Hey, how are you, babe? Hi, I'm good, but I wish you were here in Tijuana. I know, I wish you were here in San Diego. Hey, I just sent you a song. I love it, but it made me miss you even more. Next stop. Tijuana Central Bus Terminal. Hey, go outside. Wait, why? What? What are you doing here? <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> with AT&T, use your plan in Mexico like in the 619. Two countries, one network. Only with AT&T. Available for U.S. customers. Requires eligible plan. Additional speed, coverage, and other restrictions apply. Visit att.com slash one network for details.
You're just two minutes away from more fun with Annie and Elston on 97.3 The Fan. Save big during MVP's bonus days at Lowe's with limited time deals on everything you need. Right now, buy one select DeWalt 20 volt max tool. Get one DeWalt 20 volt max power stack battery two pack free, a $179 value. Plus, save $20 on a select bucket of Deck Plus wood screws. Find these deals and more in store and online today because Lowe's knows savings. Lowe's knows pros. Valid 318 through 329 while supplies last. Selection varies by location. Three and one. Cronenworth swings, lines it into right field and a base hit. Merrill comes in to score. Bogarts is being waved. He's going to score. Ball ends up at the base of the wall. Cronenworth ends up at second base. A two run double and a 6 3 lead here in the seventh. Jesse Agler here on the fan, and in just six hours and change, we'll have Padres baseball back for you today as Joe Musgrove and the Friars take on Kyle Harrison and the San Francisco Giants. 6.40 p.m. first pitch, first 40,000 fans inside the ballpark uh, get a new Padres opening weekend cap. Uh, white cap kind of has a brown leather patch in the middle, kind of a faux leather uh, bill, Saquon on the side. Very looks cool. Good. Yeah, yeah, looks good. Uh, make sure you get there, you know, not in the last 10 minutes because it's the first 40,000 fans. So those last 5,000 are, you know, just out of luck. Get there early. It also helps you get get settled, get inside the stadium, go check out Gallagher Square. Right. Just, you know, you don't feel the stress. Right. Oh, breaking news out of Major League Baseball. Annie, are you ready for this? The Dodgers, they've done it again. They've done it again. Oh, no, what have they done? They, what? They've signed. Oh, God. Drew Pomerantz to a minor league no! contract. <laughs> oh, man. Can you imagine late September? <laughs> It's coming down to something. Right. And out from nowhere comes Drew Pomerantz. And I can't even say the words that, he, you know, because you know with the Dodgers, the guy's oh going to be God. like lethal. He's going right. to strike out, you know, seven in a row or whatever. But, oh, man, Drew Pomerantz. The lefty has been what? assigned to Oklahoma City in AAA. Uh, the deal announced. This is breaking news from 97.3. The fan. Drew Pomerantz. I mean, all the wow, best that's a good to bumper. Drew Pomerantz. It just it did not work out because he we really didn't see much of Drew Pomerantz in San Diego, so there wasn't much to work out. No, there's there was a lot of rehab assignments. A lot of rehab. And now Drew can uh, get ready for his next rehab assignment as he gets ready in AAA. He'll he'll have a tune-up assignment followed by a neck pain followed by a rehab assignment. So looking forward to that. So he was with the Angels, and then the Angels released him. Or he yeah. he demanded his release after the Angels weren't going to sign him to the major league contract. And now on a minor, minor league contract with the Dodgers. Minor league contract. A couple of the other notes around big league baseball. Yesterday, Royce Lewis got hurt again. Hmm. Royce Lewis, the most talented but injured player. 
<laughs> in baseball right now. I think he leads the league in either grand slams or injuries. Uh, hit a homer. Deported, uh, departed shortly after singling in his second at bat. Uh, coming up lame, going first to third on a Carlos Correa double. Twins announced Lewis has a quadricep injury, underwent an MRI last night. Says uh, may be available, uh, may may miss the the injured list, but say la vie. You know the guy was I, I tuned in. You know I, I sampled some games. Last night, that early season buzz feels like Christmas. Wait, all these all these buttons have baseball behind them. It's awesome. You know, I'm moving around, moving around. Uh, did see the the conga line of Diamondbacks going around the bases in that 14 run inning. I, I enjoyed watching that inning. Um, not really. I didn't really enjoy watching it. It was just kind of like, holy cow! So brutal for the Rockies. I mean, like, look, we all know where the Rockies are, but that's still brutal. Uh, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. just had like all the RBI last night. I was like, well, he's going to come up and another hit and another hit and another hit. That's baseball. Uh, Gabriel Moreno. Gabriel Moreno is a good player. Like that was such a sneaky trade two years ago. And I think it's a trade that really put the Diamondbacks on the right foot. Dalton Varsho is a good player, but they, he looked a little bit better than he was mm -hmm. two years ago. Like, wow, this guy could catch, but he can also play the outfield. He can hit 20 homers. He can steal 20 bases. Like, this guy's really good. And then he went to Toronto, and he hit, like, 220 with a 270 on base percentage. And Gabriel Moreno was their guy. Like, he was really their guy. And two years ago, Alejandro Kirk came out of nowhere and was hitting 310 behind the stick. And I think the Jays were like, we don't need him. We got two good young catchers. Got to trade one, get better. Moreno, he's a tone setter in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a, a really good pickup for them, right? Like a really good move. And and I think that I'm telling you, Arizona, I I I think more so than the Giants. I I I honestly think that the Padres are gonna be able to um be be all right against the Giants. But I it's Arizona and the Dodgers, I think that are are going to be the most competitive in this division with the Padres, at least like, look what three games in, I mean, who knows, but um, they did, they did make a, a lot of nice moves over the off season. Another one that really caught my eye, Texas, Wyatt Langford. Here, here's a kid that this time last year was getting conference play started for the Florida Gators getting conference play started. And then he wound up being the number four pick in last year's MLB entry mm -hmm. draft and opening day hitting fifth right in the middle of the Rangers lineup, like had a hit as well. It's if we thought AJ was the overaggressive promoter, I mean, he's got nothing on the Rangers. There was a cool story about Wyatt Langford and how he was the worst hitter on his little league team. And he would like be so upset about it. And he was, Every, the, the 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 coach would post the stats for the little league, I guess for every game, and he'd he'd be all upset. He was always at the bottom of the list, and like that for him was like no no no, we, I'm not going to accept this. And so it was it was a fun story about him and and his meet like rocket rise here right into the big leagues and being a contributor in the big leagues. And it's good. I mean, look, you take a chance on that, it works out for you. It looks really good for the Rangers. Yeah, I flipped that game on, uh, and it was the tenth inning. And Langford was up with the bases loaded. And, and he, he didn't get the run in on that particular at bat. But he had a really long, like, hard at bat. And mm -hmm. you can even see it. Like, you can even watch a kid just for a minute. And, like, every time he gets in there, he has a look where he just kind of nods his head. And he's like, yeah, 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 I'm ready to go. Pretty interesting. The Rangers are a team that are trying to repeat as World Series champions while letting their ace starter disappear replacing veterans with guys that, that literally a year ago were straight out of college, but they've got between Carter and Langford, they've got young talent on this team. Just 44 games in the minors for Langford. It's crazy. That's insane. But yeah, games. I mean, I, <laughs> when you hit on it and it works, I mean, it looks, the, the, the organization looks really, really good. And I'm sure with the Padres, they're looking at their guys too and thinking, look, we can do the same thing. Yeah. And you know, Langford, a college hitter. So Older, right, more advanced, had had that experience, right? He's two years older than Jackson Merrill, 
for so comparison. That, and that does make a big difference, right? Like the guys that have gone to college and that have played throughout the collegiate ranks and they're coming in with a different, cause like Grand Pauly too, like you're right. You're coming in with just a different experience. Yeah. And you know, he's generally, I think going to be DHing for the team. He, he might be in the outfield uh, a, a little bit uh, overall, but he's man. Mm -hmm. Very impressive. Interesting to see some of the young players that are starting to develop and how things are getting rolling in big league baseball and just getting started. Jackson Churio, his debut is today in the lineup today for the Brewers uh, taking on the Mets right now. It's Milwaukee up three to one in the bottom of the seventh over the New York mess uh, should be a long year <laughs> in flushing, I think, but uh, it's all good. It's all good. Okay. Let's take a timeout. We are getting ready to play the match game. And that means we need two contestants for today's silly game. Want to break a little early because I always feel like match game uh, breaks the clock a little bit if we get no matches. So here's what we want to do. Open up the lines. 833-288-0973. We're not looking for one. We're looking for two contestants for the match game. 833-288-0973. Give us a call now. Adam will get you set up during the break. When we come back, we'll have two contestants going head-to-head -to, -head to try and match your all-star panel of Annie, Adam, and myself. Winner is going to qualify for our soon-to-be-arriving end-of-the-month grand prize drawing for a two-night stay at Fontainebleau, Las Vegas, and a dinner credit for two. We play the match game on Silly Games when we come back. Annie and Elston right here on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Score huge savings during Kia Madness at the Kia of El Cajon. Buy now and get more for your trade with no payments till June. Stuck in your loan or lease, Team Kia will get you released, even if you owe up to $10,000 more than your trade is worth, so you can drive a new fuel-efficient Kia for less. Like the brand new 2024 Kia Forte LXS for just $111 per month lease with zero security deposit. With a price like that, why not get two for two twenty two? dollars Score! Worried that your credit will leave you on the bench? Don't sweat it. Good or bad credit, first-time buyer, bankruptcy, even if you only have an I-10, we want to approve you. You should be driving in Kia from the Kia. Team Kia of it's back, baby. Get two new Kias for two twenty-two. T Kia of Alcohol.com. Unapproved credit, not all qualified. Plus dealer installed options. Tax title license, one fifty title and registration process. Thirty nine ninety five to its sign. Twenty four months, two thousand miles to a KMF. Credit may affect down payment. Rebates and incentives to dealer. Offers not a combination. Expires four four twenty four. Get the one and done you want for your dog's monthly protection. NextGuard Plus, a Foxal Honor Moxie Dectin and Pyrantal Chewable Tablets. Protects against fleas, ticks, heartworm disease, roundworms, and hookworms. All in one delicious beef-flavored soft chew. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. Dogs should be tested for existing heartworm infection prior to starting a preventive. Ask your vet about NextGuard Plus Chews. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. 
you give and you give. This tax season, you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a Samsung Galaxy A14 included when you buy an extended silver unlimited plan. Yeah. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah. yeah. Switch to Straight Talk. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 4-14-24. Taxes and fees apply. Ralph's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Ralph's app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. Plus, you can earn fuel points to save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. So it's easy to save big. Ralph's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Fuel restrictions apply. And right now, USDA Choice Bone-In Ribeye Roast is on sale for $7.99 a pound with your card and digital coupon. Limit one. Ralph's, fresh for everyone. This is Andrew Perloff with an Odyssey Sports Minute. If you thought this might be the year that Arizona figures it out in the tournament, you weren't alone. They had a great path to run, but the Wildcats fell to Clemson to end another postseason early. They haven't made a Final Four since 2001, despite all kinds of regular season success. And it was their fault. They settled for threes all night, and they didn't hit them. Another recipe for a disaster for college basketball's most disappointing team. I'm Andrew Perloff. fan great to have you here back with us annie and elston on 97.3 the fan gwen and chris coming up from 2 to 5 30 today is matt scraby not coming in scraby's here can't play match game he's he's re they're recording their show oh they're actually well they're doing work so yeah, i can't they're, they're recording something on the sorry show. scraby i didn't realize that so yeah. yeah yeah no that's important it is it's not like he's just kicking it watching some no. tv or something i mean he's, he's you, working yeah yes i would have just pressed record and been like you guys are cool <laughs> right okay you're good okay I'm, I'm gonna head out no 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 he takes pride in his job he does yeah. he, he's a producer through and through mm -hmm. the man produces so uh, he is not part of our all-star panel but it okay. is just about 12 45 it's time for our daily excursion into silly games <laughs> Relaxes things, you know. You have got no time to play your silly game. And then that minor chord. Take that back up. Take that. Hold for high notes. I could never hit that. You gave me five million tries. What are we playing today? We're playing the match game, everybody. Here we go. It's your chance to match the stars. We've got two contestants on the line. One of you is going to be a winner by segment's end. One of you is going to be qualified for our end of the month drawing for a two-night stay at Fontainebleau, Las Vegas, and a $150 dinner credit. Let's welcome in to play the match game. Hey, it's Jocelyn. Hi, Jocelyn. What? Whoa. Hi, Jocelyn. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! 
Justin's cursing is at she us cursing? and bleeping herself out. Yeah, is she is she cursing and, and bleeping? Jocelyn. Jocelyn. Jocelyn, you may not be playing the match game today. Maybe she needs to call back. You might need to call right back. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's welcome in definitely one of our opponents and contestants. No, he dropped two. Oh, God. What the hell's going on over there? Oh, Lord. Oh, wow. It's a Friday. It's a Friday. Adam's trying to be the host, <laughs> the producer, and the panelist. Crazy things happen. Right. All at Adam's once. got a lot going on. <laughs> The chat is just laughing because Jocelyn's so often in the chat. We go to her, she's just beeping us. Hey, Jocelyn, are you there? I'm here, you guys. Oh, my God. We went to you, and all we heard was high-pitched beeps. Jocelyn just blamed Adam <laughs> on the chat, which is amazing. Adam, your destination will be on the left. Oh, look, now we hear the navigation. <laughs> Don't ask her for help. Siri is not going to be able to help you here. <laughs> Jocelyn, thank you for being here. Are you ready to play the match game? Jocelyn. All right, we got Michael there yes. as well. Michael and okay. Jocelyn. Just wanted to make sure you were there, Jocelyn. Uh, let's, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> let's meet your Amazing. opponent. Here's Michael in Lemon Grove. Hi, Michael. Hey, guys. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Michael. Uh, just headed to the batting cages. Made the Tier 2 uh, Ben and Woods team. But, yeah, lifelong San Diego and go Padres. Go Padres. All right. Here's what's going to happen, guys. We have two rounds in the match game. Each time you are each going to be given one question. Our panel of Annie, Adam, and myself will write down our answers for how we thought we should complete the sentence. Then I will go back to you. So don't give out, don't blurt out an answer right away. We will write down ours. Then I will go back to you. I will get your answer. And every person you match on the panel is worth one point at the end of two rounds whoever has the most points is the winner if you're tied we will do a tiebreaker sound good yep. sounds good yep. all right jocelyn you called in first that means your contestant won and as such i offer you the question would you like question a or question b question a question a it is panelists listen up Mighty Mike's a different kind of manager. After a win, he likes to celebrate by jumping in a hot tub filled with blank. Mighty Mike's a different kind of manager. After a win, he likes to celebrate by jumping in a hot tub filled with blank. Got mine. I have mine. I've got it, but I'm not very confident in this one. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, we all have our answers locked in, Jocelyn. So now I come on back to you, and I'll repeat the question one more time. Mighty Mike's a different kind of manager. After a win, he likes to celebrate by jumping in a hot tub filled with... I would say ladies. Ladies! <laughs> with the ladies damn this is a quite a hot tub that's amazing no okay. sexy <laughs> catching some strays my i goodness. love that <laughs> <laughs> couldn't help myself by the way uh i should always say as a disclaimer that all the characters that you hear in match game questions are fictional True. and bear no True. resemblance to any person living <laughs> or dead all right annie Mighty Mike's a different kind of manager. Jump into a hot tub filled with beer. 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 No match, mm. but a great answer. A great answer. Uh, Adam Klug. Andy and I thinking on the same wavelength there. I also <laughs> went with beer. beer. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, and uh, Jocelyn, I went with jump into a hot tub filled with Dodger fans' tears. Wow. Mm. Just the tears. Of Dodger fans. He likes to swim in them. Luxuriate. Get the bubbly sensation of all the crying. Okay, no matches for you in the first round, Jocelyn, but it doesn't matter. You've got okay. another question. You've got another chance to go on it. But now let's turn to Michael and Lemon Grove. Okay, Michael, are you ready for your question? Yeah, let's do it. All right, here we go. Panelists, listen up. Round one, question B. Bad luck, Bob is way more San Francisco than San Diego. 
when he went to order tacos, he asked for them in a blank. Fake characters, right? These are all fake characters that bear no resemblance to anybody living or dead. Bad Luck Bob is way more San Francisco than he is San Diego. When he went to order tacos, he asked for them in a blank. We're writing down our answers. I have written down my answer. Got it. Annie's got her answer. I got it. Adam's got his answer. And that means it's time to turn things over to our man, Michael. Okay, Michael. I'll say it one more time. Bad Luck Bob is way more San Francisco than he is San Diego. When he went to order tacos, he asked for them in a... Lettuce wrap. <laughs> in a lettuce wrap. Protein style. I appreciate that. That's a good answer. Let's see what Annie has to say. I was right on this one. I, I put bowl. He asked for them in a bowl. Yeah, asked for them in a bowl. Mm -hmm. That's sure. okay. okay. It's all right. Mm -hmm. Because that seems like a San Francisco thing right. to do. Sure does. Adam? Can I buzz myself before I even reveal the answer? Oh, no. <laughs> Trolley. <In a> tr <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that answer, In the Adam. Bart? Yes. For the, well, I, this is what I was thinking when I wrote the question. And you and I were on similar lines, Annie. Mm -hmm. In a bread bowl. Oh, lovely. In a bread bowl. Because what do you get in San Francisco? You get the, the chowder yeah. at Baudin. Yes. In the bread bowl. Famous. So, you know. Hi, I'd like tacos, but could you offer them in a bowl of sourdough, please? You're no San Diegan. I've had the bread bowl there in San Francisco. It's delicious. It's, it's wonderful. It's outstanding. Ghirardelli, too. It's uh, yeah. Delicious. Every Ghirardelli tourist. came to my mind, yeah. but obviously yeah. didn't work with the tacos. No, not with the tacos, right. Well, that's how round A <laughs> often goes. They're designed for fun. We've got round B to come. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, Jocelyn went first last time. So, Michael, you get to go first this time. It is 0-0 zero, zero into round two. Would you like question A or question B? Uh, I'm going to take question A. Question A it is. Here we go, panel. George's luck is just getting worse. First he fell off a treadmill. Then he fell off a blank. George's luck <laughs> is just getting worse. First, he fell off a treadmill. Then he fell off a blank. All right. I got one. I agree with you, Diesel. Lettuce wrap was a good answer. I think Michael was on a great track right there. Sometimes you can't help it. The panelists are just, you know, like me. Dumb. <laughs> Just me. I'm not talking about anyone else. I didn't match you. I feel bad. Dee's is like, come on, guys. All right. Answer? Uh, oh, do you have it? Oh, no. Do you have yeah, it? Yeah, I have it. Adam? Yep. You got it? Okay. I've got mine, too. Kay. Michael, let's go back to you. George's luck just keeps getting worse. First, he fell off a treadmill. Then he fell off a... Michael? Michael's gone. No, I had oh, 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 you had him here. potted down. Sorry, Michael. We had you potted down. Uh, so hey, you're getting worried there again for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, George's luck is getting bike. worse. He fell off a treadmill, then he fell off a stationary bike. Stationary bike. Why does why is everyone having that one? What I don't I don't think I know this reference. Ah, okay. it's not really a reference. Okay. Well, I just have curb. He fell off a curb. The curb. Sure. It's a very reasonable okay. answer. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Fell off a bike. I went with bike or elliptical. That's it. That's a match. That is a match for Michael. Uh, Annie, look. Curb. It's, it's curb. I, I said curb, too. It's a perfectly good answer. Oh, wait, but Michael did get a match. Michael got a match. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so Michael's okay. got one match. Now Jocelyn gets Now it's Jocelyn's turn. turn. Mm -hmm. Jocelyn, it's all on you now. Final question, final round. You need one match to tie. You need at least two matches. Well, you only need two matches to win the game. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. <laughs> Question B, round two. Panelists, here we go. AJ is full of surprises. Remember, these are all fictional characters. AJ is full of surprises. He was given a brand new suit for opening day, and he blanked it. AJ is full of surprises. He was given a new suit 
for opening day, and he blanked it. This panelist has his answer. Me too. I got it. We've all got the answers. All right, Jocelyn, I turn it to you. AJ is full of surprises. He was given a new suit for opening day, and he... Wore it. <laughs> he wore it. Just wore it. <laughs> Jocelyn, I have wore it, too. He wore it. He wore he it. Because he doesn't typically yes, wear Annie. suits. Does he? No, yeah. no. He wears, like, basketball right. Right. shorts. Right. Exactly. See, I'm with you, Jocelyn. Okay, all right. Now, if Adam matches you, you win. Let's see what Adam has well, to say. Well, we still have Michael having another chance, too, though, right? Well, unless no. No, it would be 2-1. Oh, if Jocelyn... <laughs> That's correct. Michael, if Jocelyn on, gets Adam. a match, she so wins. I Don't initial... let me down, Adam. I almost wrote down, threw it away, was my initial thought, because he doesn't wear suits, but I went with trade. trade? Oh, that's a good one, AJ Adam. traded the suit. And oh, that's, we, that's that's what I went with too, Jocelyn. I went with traded it. She oh, he traded. Oh my god! Oh, it's a tie game. It. So we're tied. We're tied. Just give it to both of us. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? This is a world of competition, Jocelyn. We go to the tiebreaker. Tiebreaker time, Jocelyn. Would you like tiebreaker question A or B? These are one word questions, uh, like the super match. Would you like A or B? B. 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 It is. Yes. All right, panelists, get, give me your best answer for this. Lemon blank. Lemon blank. Lemon blank. Adam is writing. Annie is writing. I am done. Okay. Done? Yep. Mm -hmm. Done. All right. What do you got for us, Jocelyn? Lemon blank. I'm a little thirsty right now. So the first thing that came to mind was lemon aid. Lemonade. Lemonade, a perfectly good answer. Lots of possible answers. This is why it's a tiebreaker. I'm bummed I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. I put lemon oh, meringue. Lemon, lemon <laughs> meringue. Oh. Jocelyn, who's your favorite? Who's got Come on. You? Come on, Adam. You're the best, boss. You are the best. Lemonade, baby. There's a match. <laughs> yeah. And Jocelyn, Come I on, went. Craig. Lemon Grove. I went Lemon Grove. Oh. My first thought was Grove. Adam I went the goat. All right. Adam is the goat. Right. Jocelyn's yes. up one nothing. Let's see. Michael, you need you need to get two to win the game. Michael, here is yours. Cardiff blank. Oh, Michael. Cardiff blank. All right, I got mine. And he's got hers. I'm good. Adam's got his. Michael, let's see if you can win the game. Cardiff. I'm going to go. Go ahead. I'm going to go with the uh, true San Diego in reference Cardiff Kook. The Cardiff Kook. That is good, but I went Cardiff Crack. Cardiff Crack. No match. Adam? Crack was my first answer, but I didn't write it down. I went tri tip. Cardiff tri tip, which is kind of the same. <laughs> Oh, no, but what did I do? I put kook. And we've managed oh, to match. Oh, my. We've managed to it's match. It's a one-hour segment. It's a yeah. one-hour segment. We're blowing the clock to smithereens. I'm down I'm down to go to the Olympic medal. We both get gold. Okay, you both qualify. I don't care. Yeah. You both qualify. Out, Adam. <laughs> you both qualify. Adam. Adam's the goat. I'm telling you. <laughs> we've got the, the Olympic music for you all. Hey, thanks for playing, guys. You did a great job. Jocelyn, oh, Michael, you did too fun. well to be uh, to come up short. You are both <laughs> stay right there on the line. Adam's going to take both of your uh, information down, and you are both in the end of the month drawing. Congratulations and thanks for playing the match game. All right, let's take a break. We're overdue. Top of the hour. We're coming back. Hour number four of Annie and Elston next on the fan. Summertime is fun time at the Y. Sign up today for day and overnight camps at 17 San Diego locations. At the Y, kids will find fun, friendship,
the good times start now. Here are your hosts, Annie and Elston, on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Here we go. One. Oh. Line drive, left center Sorry. field. Conforto and Lee coming on. Going to drop down and a base hit. Wade will score to give the Padres the lead. Third hit of the inning. Xander Bogart, second hit of the day. An RBI single, and it's 4-3. to three. You told me you were doing that. It's on me. Annie and Elston back with you for hour number four. Annie Halbrun, Craig Elston, Adam Klug's in for Braden Soprano. He'll be back on Monday. Thanks to our match game competitors. We had a fun one against again today. Segment continues to grow and grow. Monday's silly game will be Fast Money. Tuesday, Hot Potato. That's how we rotate it through. Uh, and what? By next week, we'll have a new drawing. Right, Adam? New prize, new drawing, new everything. Very good. So thanks to Jocelyn and Michael. We had a, a two-winner game because we cheated. Ran out of time and said, you're all winners. It's good. It's good for a Friday. Good vibes. Yeah, hand out some orange slices, some uh, Capri Suns. We're all winners today. One, one tie. It's all good. We got uh, Gwen and Chris coming up at the top of the hour. Be very interested to hear Tony Gwynn Jr.'s thoughts uh, on the opener, a 6-4 Absolutely. win for the Giants. You know what's what's really exciting, Annie, is, is now you get that dub, right? Now, now you get going. You get the season underway. You got the win. And the way the Padres are designed is to get on a roll. It's to get streaks. That's what happens when you add another elite starter to your rotation. So now you've got the dub under the bat, you know, uh, un under your thumb with Darvish. And now you give the ball to Joe Musgrove against Harrison, a rookie. And then the next day you give the ball to Dylan Cease. And Sunday, weather permitting, Michael King is waiting in the wings. And that's a four game set with four starters who all think of themselves as having number one starter stuff. Yeah. I mean, so far, the way that this rotation looks, if, if it's able to kind of go as planned, it's a good rotation. I mean, it really is for the Padres and guys that are known for posting all year long that should still be good to go. If the Padres do make it to the postseason, they should still be great in the postseason or, you know, at their, at knowing what to do, knowing what's at stake, the moment won't be too big for them. They'll still be able to to get the job done. And so I think that like having just having those guys on your team and then being able to build off that. And of course, to get, you know, it's a long way to go between now and October and what the postseason may hold. There's a lot of probably going to be a lot of things that happen along the way. But yeah, you have Joe Musgrove. You were excited about you, Darvish. Now you're excited about Joe Musgrove. And the rest of the, the pitching matchups on Saturday, it's Dylan Cease against Jordan Hicks, who is a reliever converted starter. So even if he's good, he's not going to be there for a long time. Mm -hmm. He might be there for a good time. He won't be there for a long time on Saturday. Sunday's a bullpen day for the Giants. Like fourth star fourth starter right now for the Giants is we don't know. So but you know what? That's game four for the Giants. I mean, who knows how many bullpen arms they're gonna have to use between now and Sunday. That right. might be a really tough game for the Giants to pull off. It really is making me root for a situation where the weather windows line up to get all four of these games in. You know, it, it's something that we talked about before, right? But you're front loading seven of the 13 Giants games into the first two weekends mm -hmm. of the season, a four game set, a three game set. And I think that's great news for the San Diego Padres. No Snell, no Robbie Ray, no Alex Cobb. These are that's sixty percent of the Giants' rotation that's currently unavailable, and probably will be unavailable all the way through those seven games played. Exactly, and a team that's still really trying to figure themselves out, trying to learn what it's going to be like under a new manager. Uh, this is a good time for the Padres to keep their foot on the gas. Just do play their game, play that they the way they have been the last few games but also kind of smell blood in the water a little bit. Like that's what you want to do as an aggressive team. You want to look at those windows where you can really capitalize. You know, when I, when I watched the giants yesterday, you know, that top four, Jung Hu Lee, we'll see, right? Like we'll see, maybe he'll be good. Left-handed bat. He's obviously fast. Mm -hmm. uh, batting second Solaire. And Jorge Soler is a big question mark. For this team this year, would I have been happy if the Padres signed Jorge Soler? Of course. He's got power. But 
much like J.D. Martinez talking about playing at Pac Bell Park and might knock down your numbers, Jorge Soler has to worry about the exact same thing. He is playing in pitcher's parks in a pitcher's division now. He is facing way better pitching than he was facing in the Central uh, in some of his previous stops. And I'm curious how he goes because you got Lee, you got Soler, Lamont Wade in the three spot. I'm sure they probably look at us and go, Jake Cronenworth in the three spot. But like Lamont Wade in the three spot, Matt Chapman, who after April last year couldn't hit anything for five months. He's your cleanup hitter. So every team's got their strengths and weaknesses. And one thing that I would definitely point out for the Padres is kind of obvious, but we got some studs at the top of our lineup. Exactly. And those guys are ready to turn around what happened at the end of last season or for most of last season. They're ready to get that taste out of their mouth and I think show that they are going to be those kinds of players for the Padres and to get them going in a somewhat consistent fashion. And then also to have the production from the bottom of the lineup. I mean, look, the Padres had... Uh, they had a lot of hits yesterday from the bottom of the lineup or they had timely hits from the bottom of the lineup and hits that mattered and hits that were, you know, done in good situations. And so if you're getting that, if you're getting a profile RBI and a Wade, you know, doing what he did and, and just Jackson Merrill drawing that walk and continuing to pass the baton then to the top of the lineup, like you're able to put together some really good uh, at bats there through the, through the lineup. A couple of games are in progress right now. Uh, bottom of the ninth at City Field. The Brewers are leading the Mets 3-1. to one. Of course, Milwaukee doesn't have their closer. They've got Uribe in the game. I literally don't know who that is. Abner Uribe. Time to go pick up Abner Uribe in fantasy. It looks like he's getting safe situations for the Milwaukee Brewers. So that is exciting uh, for them. Uh, one other game going on. Holy cow, Craig, what did you just do? Oh, there we go. Uh, one other game going on. Bottom four, no score. A's, or pardon me, Braves and Phillies. Strider versus Wheeler. Mm. Woo it's going to be a good one. Baseball. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. How about Corbin Burns? Did you see his debut yesterday? I did not. Gave up a homer in the first, mm -hmm. nothing else the rest of the game. Six innings, 11 strikeouts, one hit allowed. First opening day starter to allow only one hit and strike out more than 10 <sighs> uh, since I think 1900. So it's going to be, it's going to be tough. I mean, that's <laughs> a heck of a debut right there. Pretty impressive today. Uh, Cal Quantrill makes his Colorado Rockies debut against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Merrill Kelly will throw for the Snakes. Dodgers host the Cardinals once again. That's Zach Thompson for St. Louis and Bobby Miller for L.A. Dodgers now 2-1, and one, Padres 2-1, and one, and tied atop. Well, I guess the Diamondbacks technically with a 1,000 win percentage at 1-0 and oh are on top for now. But those are some of the matchups uh, coming up as the day continues in Major League Baseball. Carlos Radon on the mound for the Yankees against the Astros as well, who throw Christian Javier. So a lot of positives to draw out of yesterday's game, and now we start to turn ahead. And one thing I'm going to be really curious to see in the next couple hours, Annie, is the starting lineup. Yeah. Because uh, will we see Hassan Kim in the leadoff spot against left-handers like we saw a couple times in the spring? Right, exactly. How does Mike Schultz kind of maneuver that? And I think it'll give us a good indication, too, of what the plan is, right, as they switch between right-handed and left-handed pitchers, at least for now, at least until they kind of get more of a sense of maybe what these strengths are for these guys and exactly where to position them into the lineup. But um, I think I, I have a feeling that it's going to be a little different today and that you may indeed see that. Yeah, I mean, I would almost imagine – Kim Tatis Bogarts Machado because would you keep Crone in the three spot against a lefty? Mm, I don't know. Well, I guess we'll have to wait to see, but I'm just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. He's got some, some options there, some decisions, and it's hard to know exactly what the mindset is. Like, are they just going matchup based? You know, is it based on also other factors? Indeed. So we're excited about what we've seen so far, but I, I think resetting just our general themes when we broke down, opening day uh annie is a team that has shown resilience and a team that has shown the ability through three games long time to go to react to adversity and, and that's the thing that i think really got me the most is you fell behind you came back you fell behind again 
and you came back again and, and both times in quick order, like within a couple of innings, uh, getting that lead back. That type of fight is the type of fight you're going to need in the toughest division in baseball. And the big thing for me on that is that that's what they're telling themselves. Like the more they tell themselves this, the more they start to believe that they are this kind of team, then the more that they do it on the field, the more it just sort of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy for them that they are able to use during the tough times. Well, we're, we're this kind of team. This is what we do. This is how we play. And it's not enough of a sample size to know if it's going to last all year, but the more they tell themselves that, the more that they can believe it and they can go do it. And that is definitely what they have told themselves all spring training. It's what Mike Schultz has been preaching to them. They're going to be a different kind of team this year. And you're not going to be able to push the San Diego Padres around is essentially the, the way that they're going. Remember what the number one question was that we were asked yesterday, Annie? Over and over, last two days. How do you watch this team? Right? How do you watch this team? Oh, TV, actual TV, literal. T yeah, yeah. How how do I watch? Well, that, they they learned that yesterday. Uh, was it late Wednesday? The early Thursday? It was Thursday. I don't know when they learned that. It was yeah, literally but... Thursday morning, and I'm sure a couple of people out there missed it. So the team, like I think three hours, four hours before the game, <laughs> said, "Here we go." What we told you was true. Where you watched it is where you can watch it like, like, again. I don't know. What is the story behind that? Like, did they just want to maybe drive up their subscriptions before letting the public know where to find it? Like, I don't know, because they ha it doesn't seem like there was a ton of controversy. Like, usually you'll hear a, maybe a network come out or a carried carrier and yeah. be like, well, we'd love to, to, to have the, you know, the Rangers or the Padres or whoever on our TV, but you know, we can't come to an agreement or whatever. And yeah. maybe that's what would have happened if they didn't come to an agreement, but it was so, here you go. No problems, no issues, right where you saw it last year, maybe a little tweak here and there. It just, it was just, was kind of odd that they sat on it that long. And I don't know that that was a Padres thing. Maybe that was an MLB thing. Maybe. Yeah. And I think you'd have to give somebody truth serum to find out yeah, it's odd. like the absolute, odd. you know, bottom of it, whether it was an attempt to stoke subscriptions or something else. But just in case, let me let you know mm -hmm. that uh, if you have direct TV, it's channel 694, which is where it was before. That's what was the old Valley sports, Fox sports, San Diego slot. If I remember right to like five years ago when I had direct yeah, TV. Yeah, it was 694. Mm -hmm. 694. It's 694 dash three now, right? Yes. Uh, D Direct TV Stream 694 Direct TV DBS. What does that mean? Satellite? Just, you'll find 694 and it'll show yeah. a Padre symbol and you click on that. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Cox subscribers are on channel 83. I think that used to be four. Okay. They're on channel 83. Um, just use the you please utilize this information to the best of your ability. You know, like if you need it, great. If not, please enjoy the others who needed it. Uh, in space. On Spectrum, it's uh, either 305 or 443. So if it's not on one, it's on the other. Uh, unless you're in Hawaii, in which case, why are you listening to us? Um, 230 or 443 in Hawaii. Uh, and AT&T U-verse customers, it's on channel 781 or 1781. And also, the games are available on Fubo. Fubo. Streaming service that is very sports heavy. Fubo. One guy that we talked about a little bit earlier in the show, but probably deserves mention again, too, is Jake Cronenworth. Just a nice Absolutely. situational hit. That's what you wanted to see out of him right there. And that's an encouraging sign, what has been shown by Jake Cronenworth in these last few games. Hey, four for four back in Korea. Mm -hmm. And we said, amazing, that's one game. But what I'm really excited about right now is, is kind of we're, we're getting the feel around Crony this year, but again, I, I felt like we were going to get last year. Like last year, we were like, wow, he's batting fifth and he's behind all these guys. Mm -hmm. Crony's going to get a chance to drive in 100 runs easy this year because he's going to have three guys on base or two guys on base like half the time that he's at the plate. And he really struggled when he was asked to be an RBI man, when he was asked to be a run producer for the Padres. But this year, it's not being the five drive everything in it's being the three be our best hitter that mm -hmm. right third third guy in your lineup traditionally is your best hitter like that's that's the idea like when managers i want the guy who's just a pure hitter in the three spot and while jake has not been a pure hitter the last couple of years boy so far so good 
yeah, you, it's, it's encouraging to see. And um, I, I just like the fact that, you know, being able to come up big in some of these games to start the season, I think if he was looking for a little bit of a confidence boost and it, it's just kind of a little bit of a, of confirming that the work he did over the off season might've been the right work for him to do. And again, we keep saying it, we'll keep saying it all year. It's a long season. These are only three games so far, but it's a good sign to start the season. What? Wow. Hey, I don't know if you can see this behind uh, Jeff McNeil got into a scrap, uh, at least a verbal scrap with a member of the Milwaukee Brewers who then looked at him from the dugout and did the crying eyes. Like, oh, crying eyes. Baseball is back. Baseball is. Oh, it's Reese Hoskins. <laughs> Reese Hoskins came chugging into second base, took out the legs of McNeil, who was behind the bag. Oh, he's Ma yelling. Yeah, McNeil was like, you know, doing the fake swing of the of the fist, not to mm. hit him, but like, you, you're bad. Burr, burr, burr. And then uh, the managers came out and Hoskins did the crying eyes over to mm. McNeil. Fun. They, the moments that are going to make your hit your social media timelines. Oh, well, you got a taste of it right there. Before we go to break, because we're going to do uh, an Ask Us Anything in our next segment. Mm -hmm. Andy's going to leave a little bit early today. She's just going to miss the last segment. We're going to have Media Melanie on. We're going to put Netflix and chill at the end of the show. So I did want to get to this. Adam has this clipped up for us as well. Quick switch back to San Diego State. Aztecs, of course, ran into the best team in the country yesterday in UConn. The final result was a 30-point loss. Uh, they they got grounded, <laughs> ground down uh, at the end of the game. But Dan Hurley, who seems like the kind of guy I wouldn't enjoy spending any time with, uh, but still came up classy at the start of his post-game uh, press conference with some kind words for the Aztecs. Yeah, obviously, you know, thrilled with the performance. Uh, and it's, you know, just playing against Brian, Brian's teams. Uh, you know, just it's, uh, it's it's always an honor to play San Diego State. Um, they've been one of the best college basketball programs um, you know, in the country for the last, you know, several years. The job he's done there, it's incredible. Uh, couldn't have more respect for their players, you know, how they show up. Um, obviously, you know, we had our best night and uh, – and they didn't have one of their best nights, and uh, obviously didn't expect a game like this versus those guys. But you know, ultimate respect to San Diego State, true, uh, true champions. That's cool. That's I mean, it you was know, nice. Look. It was some nice, respectful words. He paid respect to Brian Dutcher and the program that he's built. An excellent program, like you said. It's not just a season; it's a program. It's an right. identity for them. So that was nice of him to acknowledge that. Yeah. Before and he did his laundry. His wife did his laundry. Before his wife did his yeah. laundry. I heard Ben and Woods do that in the don't do this today. Like, I mean, literally hand washing yeah. is, is chonies in between yeah. games. He has to wear the exact same outfit every game. It's ridiculous. Down to his like socks and underwear. It's ridiculous. You know, I, and I, I love him. My boss, Sean at soccer's, I love him to death. He's got weird ass superstitions. Like, for example, we have a yellow cooler that is up in the broadcast area for you know water and Gatorade during the game. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a cooler I bought because it was like, you know, we didn't have a cooler. Like, oh, we should get a cooler. I'm like, okay, I went to Target. I bought a cooler. And I leave it in my car. I just leave it in my car. Like, get there, put in the stuff, done, take out the stuff, put it in my car. So it's always in my car. Every game day, four hours before the game. Hey, Craig, don't forget the yellow cooler. <laughs> And every time I'm like, it's in my car. Yeah. It's like, we're good. We're good. It's it's there. It's, yeah. It never leaves. Like <laughs> the only way is if my car is stolen, there won't be a yellow cooler. Otherwise, cooler's there. It's dude. there. We're good. And then he's like, ha ha ha. This is one of my super, like, this is one of my game day routines. Oh. I just got to, you know, I'm like, I looked. So then the next day I was like, you know, Sean, we've lost three times at home. <laughs> like, are we sure that all of these are, are, properly working yeah. to keep <laughs> right like do you keep the superstitions after a loss like maybe you lay off the text the daily text asking about the the cooler <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh uh nobody says if you want him happy bring him some spitz cracked pepper seeds all right nobody is a sean bowers fan well yeah i mean i want to keep sean happy obviously i want you know want, want to keep my gig but 
I don't really need that text. I mean, it's a superstition, but the superstition's no good. Yeah. We've lost three times. Like, g- give me a new text. So, something at like 10 Change in the morning. Change it up. Yeah, sh- switch it up. He does this whole thing. Everyone has to do a high five, like, you know, like switch it left hand this time. Like something different, anything different. Okay. I digressed far enough. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to do an early ask us anything. Mm-hmm. We got a question for Adam too, that he needs to answer. I, I can't wait. Yeah. I mean, Adam can be part of ask yeah, us of anything. Course. We, he's here. Let's do it. So this is our all topics call in slash write in segment. You can give us a ring during the break, 833-288-0973. Adam will screen you up. We'll bring you on the air uh, during the segment. You can also drop us a question in the YouTube as Squirrely did. Uh, tag that once, uh, Adam. We'll, we'll definitely get to that when we get back. And uh, then we'll wrap things up. We'll, we'll ship Annie off to the ballpark. Uh, we'll bring in Media Melanie. We'll wrap things up uh, with our Crossing Stream segment as well. As well. So 833-288-0973. All we ask is that when you do call in, you have a question for Annie or Adam or myself. A question because the name of the segment is Ask Us Anything on Annie and Elston here on The Fan.
129 on the fan. Welcome back. Annie and Elston, uh, our last segment together for the week. Annie's going to take off one segment early. Media Melanie is going to jump in uh, for our crossing stream slash Netflix and chill segment to wrap up the show. So that means we take our end of show segment and we push it up one segment. It is time to. Her name is Annie. His name is Craig. They're joined by Braden. But who are they really? Never hurts to ask. It's time to ask us anything on Annie and Elston. All right. 833-288-0973. You have six minutes to call the show. If you call in the next six minutes, Adam will pop you up. Uh, after that, put a break on it. 833-288-0973. We've got some dynamite questions in the YouTube chat that I've been agonizing over during the break as well. But Rudy in Lake Elsinore called in, and let's find out what Rudy in Lake Elsinore uh, has to say. Hi, Rudy. You're on with Annie and Elston. Ask us anything. Hey, Annie, I have a question. So if you had a favorite baseball team, what would it be besides the Padres? Hmm. I was just joking around. Like what, how much would you guys kill me if I was like, oh, I love the Dodgers. I'm just kidding. That's not my answer. All right. Um, so don't, don't tweet me. Don't at me. Um, I, another team besides the Padres is tough because I grew up in San Diego. So I, I, I don't know of any other team besides the Padres, but if I was going to go for a team that I think is fun to watch, I would go with the Braves. I would go with Atlanta and I'd be like, you know what? I could see becoming a fan of that team. If you didn't have a, a team that you already root for in your hometown, I suppose. Because I grew up in Long Beach. I'm <laughs> easy over there. Too. No one thinks Atlanta is great. Uh, other than some people. Uh, I grew up in Long Beach. So I always grew up with two teams because I always had my national league team. And then who I won't say, and then the angels. Mm -hmm. So, my whole life, I've been a casual Angels fan, and it's pretty tough to be an Angels fan these days because the organization is basically what they did yesterday. Mike Trout hits a homer, and everyone else loses. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, well, Mike Trout homered in the Angels, 11-3 to loss. Uh, so that's been my second team. Not that you asked me, Rudy. Yeah. Uh, and of late, of the last 10 years, I drifted over to Toronto. Because oh, I, Toronto's cool. Yeah, because different country, one team for a whole country. Good answer. Love the colors, mm -hmm. love the uniforms, and especially back in the mid 2010s with Bautista and Donaldson. You know, it was a great team, mm -hmm. and Edwin Encarnacion. Like those were great teams. Uh, and no Diesel. I grew up in Long Beach. Okay, so I've I've said this many times. Ben has tweaked me many times. I grew up in Long Beach. I did grow up a Dodgers fan. I started to drift away from them when Fox bought the team. And now I hate them completely. You know, I mean, my dad still loves the Dodgers and he'll text me about how great the Dodgers are. And I, I, I play along, you know, and like when the game's on at his house, I'm, I'll sit there and listen to Joe Davis going, oh, another big hit for Mookie. Yeah. But I want the Dodgers to lose. I'm a Padres fan all the way. So they make me sick now, but. I, for one, thought Braves was a great answer. Of Annie. course. Oh, yeah, cool. Uh, of course Thanks. you did, Adam. Thanks, getting Adam. some points here with the boss man. Appreciate you. <laughs> Appreciate you. Um, okay. This question had me uh, broken from Casida Pro Dev. If you could travel back in time to a sports event, where would you go? I would go back to 1998 to the Padres at Yankee Stadium, Tony Gwynn quiets the crowd with this home run in the World Series. I know, obviously, they didn't win the World Series, but Tony Gwynn called it the most exciting moment of his life, of, of his career, of his career, sorry. I'm sure his kids being born and things like that were more exciting. But the most exciting moment of his career was this home run in Yankee Stadium, and I would have loved to be there to just hear that crowd just completely shut up. I have been thinking about this the whole break and I'm going to go way off the board and I am going to put myself in a time machine to send me back to when I was 13 going on 14 and to an event that I would never have thought of when I was 13 going on 14 to go to. But now that I know the history of it, I would go to Mexico 
to witness the semifinals and the final of the 1986 FIFA World Cup. Mm. That was Argentina's Maradona year. The semifinal against Belgium, the hand of God goal, also one of the most spectacular goals in World Cup history where he dribbled the whole team and went through. And then the final when they played the team that was supposed to beat them, West Germany, and they prevailed three to two, capturing an entire continent's heart. I would go back to the 1986 FIFA World Cup because I can't even imagine what the fields were like to be there with 120,000 people in person. Yeah, pretty exciting. Adam? I thought this was a terrific question. My initial reaction was to go back to the uh, 95 Braves game six to see them win their first Ooh. title. But I'm actually going to go back to a non-championship moment. This was the seminal sporting moment of my childhood. I would have gone to the Braves Pirates NLCS Francisco Cabrera yes. driving in in the ninth inning, Sid Bream around third base. Where were you when Sid slid? It was such a big deal when I was a kid. <laughs> 1991, so I was eight years old. I would go back and experience that live, sending the Braves to their first World Series. I That's was at awesome. the Caliente Sportsbook when Sid slid. Literally. I was across the border in TJ. I had bet the Pirates. Didn't work out for me. Drebeck. He was good. Maybe shouldn't have started the night. Stan Belinda, not necessarily a closer, as it turns out. Great question. Now, we got one more here, and it is for our esteemed boss. Squirrely says, uh, how many years has Adam been in the radio business? He does a heck of a job. Squirrely, I was just asking Adam about his career in one of the breaks because I was saying the same thing. He's multi-talented, as Craig talked about earlier in the show. Oops, I pressed a button. Sorry, Adam. Diesel bringing up the Falcons Patriots Super Bowl. How dare you? <laughs> 28 to 3. Um, I have been in radio for about 18 years. Started off producing morning radio in Atlanta. Then I went up to ESPN and was a producer there. And then got this off. Then I went to CBS Sports Radio and helped as a producer and launched the uh, network off the ground when that launched. And then got this opportunity to come out to San Diego. Very cool. Amazing. You're still in it. Still loving it. Because you're doing a good Nothing job. Like it. Doing a heck of a job. And Brownie, you. you're doing a heck of a job. All right. Ask us anything for a Friday. Thanks to everybody. We appreciate you all. We say it every single week at the end of the show, but it is, is a message of gratitude to everyone in the audience. And actually, you know what? That reminds me. That reminds me. Before I let you go, Annie, uh, I had an ask me, ask us anything submitted yesterday to me in advance. Uh, at Bottle Rocket uh, from Danielle. Uh, great Danielle. Shout out to see Danielle. Used to work at 91X. Uh, work, worked in the biz Works in the business. Knows the business. And she came up to me. Uh, it was close to the end of the first half. She came up. She said, I don't know if it's a good time, but I just want to let you know how much I love what's going on with your guys' show. How much I appreciate what's happening, how I can listen to the station all day. And she asked me, Dan, uh, Danielle did, Annie. She said, does Annie know how much she is beloved in this city by everybody, by so many people, how beloved and respected and loved that, she, that you are? And I said, I don't know that she does. <laughs> I don't know that she does. Danielle, that is really, really nice, first of all. That's just so nice to mention that to Craig as well. And just to even think those thoughts. And um, I never I never really think about it. I just, you know, I, I love this city. I love these fans. I completely love the fact that these fans have let me grow up inside the city and change, you know, go from the Chargers to the Padres and experiment in my career and try new things. And um, and they've been embracing of that the entire time. So I, I really appreciate that. And I thank you for that very, very much. Yeah. Danielle, uh, Nancy Marshall came up to tell me, uh, just how much she is in love with the show and, and hearing you every day on the air and the intelligence that you bring and, and how, you know, even you are, uh, with everything, of course, uh, Annie, who's been a friend, a different Annie and any, uh, different last name. Uh, she was hanging out with us at the uh, Baja Ricks at, at our live remote, uh, spent some time after the show just to say, like, believe in yourself. You're doing a great job. You are doing everything 
show is still new. Everything's moving, but don't be worried. Don't be afraid. You are doing great. And she was talking about you. <laughs> she, wasn't talking about me. she was talking about you. And I said, thank you. No, it's absolutely true. And I will pass it along. That's so. no, really, really kind. And I love you guys. And gosh, I know we appreciate as a station, everybody that's hung with us as we're finding our way with this show. And as the baseball season starting, and I know for my career as a whole, I really appreciate everybody in San Diego and the, the support that they've given me throughout my career. So there it is, Annie. Ask us anything. Do you know that you are loved? <laughs> I didn't know that I was that loved. So thank you very much. It was very nice. Well, enjoy the re enjoy the next uh, twenty minutes off. We'll, we'll, we love you so well, much. It's not off. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to go get little things to report back on the, uh, on next week's show. With. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'll be looking forward to that yeah. report. I do love to report. No, you do. Mm -hmm. You do. You report. We decide. Um, let's, <laughs> let's take our last break. Media Melanie is going to step in for our final segment as we do our weekly television streaming recommendations segment. That's what we will do to wrap up the show today. Uh, I'm just going to go back to calling it crossing streams. Okay. Yeah. Mel Melanie and I were crossing <laughs> our streaming recommendations. I love having Melanie on the show. It's so awesome that she gets to come on or she chooses to come on. She spends her time coming on. Um, and it's great to hear another female perspective on the show as well. Let's take a break. We will hear from Melanie when we come back. Annie and Elston on the fan.
147 on the fan. Last segment of the week for Andy and Elston. We'll be back with a full week's programming coming up uh, starting Monday at 10 a.m. Annie is off to the Padres Clubhouse and will be uh, gifted by her reporting and everything that she has uh, to offer. I don't get to go back, uh, Adam, to, to the Clubhouse this weekend, unfortunately. Uh, tonight, Wave. Hey, shout out, San Diego Wave FC, Seattle Rain tonight, 7.05, Snapdragon Stadium. How cool is this sports city that we're going to have 45,000 down at Petco and we're going to probably have another 25, 30,000 at Snapdragon Stadium for our two current Major League Sports teams. Uh, that is awesome. So got that tonight. Can't go to Tony. Big, big time regrets to all of my real ones, all my Padre fans that will be there for Tony Gwynn opening day. Uh, it is usually a, a yearly tradition for me and got a cons. You know, I'm, I'm dying to take my kids to a wave game, by the way. Haven't done it yet. I know they've been here and I haven't done it yet, but I'm dying to. Got to do kids it. Would have a blast. Got to do it. Saturday night, soccer's final home match at Pachanga Arena. So can't go to the Padres game on Saturday. Sunday, I, I could, but it's going to rain. It's going to rain. So uh, hopefully it won't rain out, but. I will be there Monday. That will be the next time I will be at Petco Park is Monday because I am there to celebrate the Waldron. Cauldron, not Waldron. Let's go. Okay, let's go to the phones, to our 97.3 The Fan Hotline, and welcome in Media Melanie for this week's edition of Crossing Streams, where we offer our streaming television recommendations for the weekend that will be. Media Melanie, how are you? I am doing well, Craig. Happy it's Friday. Really excited. The Padres got a W yesterday and looking forward to a great weekend. Absolutely. And I just saw what you wrote in the chat. We should meet in person on Monday. Let's do that. Uh, let's make sure that we yeah. can do that. We can put a face to a voice. I mean, I've seen your face, but only on Let's Make a Deal. So you've, <laughs> seen, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you've seen mine, but only on YouTube. It's kind of the same thing, just on a screen. Yep, yep. Uh, all right. You're coming in with a streaming recommendation. I've got one as well. What you got for us this week? Okay, so this week's pick might be a little bit lesser known. It first premiered on Stars in 2020, but I just recently got into it because there was some buzz surrounding its third and final season, which actually concluded on March 8th. I also like that Jerry Bruckheimer and Jonathan Littman are among the executive producers on this show. It is called High Town. It's a crime drama, and it takes place on Cape Cod. Hmm. Now, I grew up in Massachusetts, so I gravitated towards the gritty East Coast vibe, and this show definitely is very mass holy. Um, <laughs> High Town follows, <laughs> yes, former mass hole here. Uh, High Town follows Jackie Quinones. She's a National Marine Fisheries agent who loves to party. Her life and sobriety are challenged when she discovers a dead body and ends up becoming a key part of the investigation. Her and a chaotically corrupt police detective, Ray Abruzzo, work together to solve the murder and a bunch of related drug dealing type of crimes. Now, the series is pretty graphic. It has a lot of substance abuse, themes of addiction and adult situations. It's very dark and the characters all struggle with a lot of different inner demons. They're also the types of characters who, yes, they have these issues, but you still wanna root for them despite the missteps that they all continue to, to take. Uh, High Town is highly serialized, meaning it's less case of the week, more focused on a season long storyline. I'm just finishing up season one now, but from what I understand, each season follows a new case. And you know what, this one might skew just a little bit on the trash TV side, but Craig, <laughs> as you like to say, it could work as one of those mindless folding laundry type of shows. And Stars actually offers a bunch of different pricing specials. So if you did want to give it a try, there's also another show on there called BMF, Black Mafia Family, that looks really good. And a new series called Mary and George, which is premiering on April 5th. So Stars, you know, not the most popular streaming service, but High Town is a pretty good watch. So that's my pick of the week. I like it, Media Melanie. Appreciate it. And, and indeed, I don't have Stars either, but... Uh worth giving it a look and you know there's so many whether it's prime whether it's paramount plus where you can drop one of these things in uh for just like either a free trial for a month or maybe a couple of bucks so uh worth taking yeah. a look on my side i want to start by echoing your recommendation from last week because i did get the opportunity to uh watch the first couple of episodes of three body problem uh streaming Ooh, I... streaming on netflix and i think 100 percent 
it is a compelling watch that is going to just what they've designed it it attacks a broad swath of potential viewers so if you like a mystery a kind of a who not a whodunit but something that's unfolding a puzzle box show what what is happening why yeah. why are all these things happening why are why are scientists committing suicide what what is what is going on why why are the stars blinking uh in the night out of nowhere uh three body problem has a dense plot but one that i think they are doing a very good job on the show of breaking down into digestible elements um and also i didn't know that there were that many hot physicists Melanie. <laughs> uh, Very attractive scientists on three body problem. Yes, I noticed that too. It just turns out that if you're a British physicist, you <laughs> you might also be supermodel worthy. Uh so might so, be hot. Just might be. So that, that works. But uh that is that is just a, a re-recommendation uh of what you brought out. Today's streaming recommendation for me is a film that was nominated for Best Picture this year and just started streaming last weekend on Hulu. And that is Anatomy of a Fall. Uh, I had read about this movie, Melanie, when you know they announced the best picture. I, I hadn't seen anything prior to that. Uh, but then I watched it. It's, a, it's about a two and a half hour film. Uh, that I watched it over the weekend and I was absolutely transfixed. This is not based on a real story. Uh, this is a fictionalized trial of uh, a family, a, a, a woman, man, and their half blind son who's about 12 years old uh who goes out to walk the dog they they live in snowy france uh goes out to walk the dog comes back and finds that dad has fallen from the balcony uh of the house and is dead has has fallen into the snow Ooh. and died and pretty quickly the murder investigation winds up fingering mom as the killer and she is pause put... what <laughs> what did i say Never mind. What did I say? Um, oh, what? oh, that's a, you think like Woods. <laughs> it's Friday. <laughs> Anyways, What's it's happening? really, really good. It's a detailed trial type movie if you're into that thing and the ambiguous did she do it, did she not do it? It's really, really good. And I highly recommend Anatomy of a Fall. Melanie, the show's over. Thanks for being here. For Annie and Adam, I'm Craig. See ya. Pod Ray.